Indiana 2-0. As we get set to move you along, enjoy New Mexico and San Jose State. We welcome those of you that just watched Indiana and Rutgers. The Hoosiers getting to 2-0 here in San Jose, New Mexico. Had its game canceled last week, so this is the first game of the year for the Lobos against the San Jose State team that is trying to get to 2-0 for the first time in over 30 years. Guy, I think you'll see a lot of what Texas has run since he was there last. We'll watch throughout the course of this game to see if that's true. There's Cress in motion. Carroll is the running back, and it'll be Bryson Carroll who gets the carry. And he gets very near the sticks, right at the first down marker. We'll see if they give him the progress. Nehemiah Shelton there on the stop. Carroll lost a shoe. Take a look at the starting lineup up front. Stapley and Saltis, the center, and the right tackle. They are very consistent. And Elijah Queen, the lone starter, the freshman lone starter, as that's incomplete for Press. And it's a big deal that Cress is here. He was just cleared on Monday. Jordan Cress, the senior, he's a huge team leader, had COVID-19, was positive back in yeah. July. A couple of weeks ago, was diagnosed with myocarditis. The doctors don't believe it was related to the coronavirus because he did deal with an arrhythmia at a young age. But they were not sure if he'd be able to be on the field. They did give the first down. And Tuioti completes to Emmanuel Logan Green. And New Mexico is across midfield. A lot of misdirection early for this defense. They're going to have to handle that throughout the course of this game. Uh, San Jose State defensive line that's upgraded. A couple of JC transfers to beef it up. Kyle Harmon, who is fantastic, the linebacker in the center of things. He had a great game against Air Force last week in the victory. This is vigilant on the pitch. Harmon was the man that initially disrupted the play, and then the help comes. They read that perfectly, and it's been a lot of misdirection. That time, Kyle Har Harmon, who was a former running back in high school, recognized it but couldn't make the tackle. He's always around the football. When you see 45, usually the ball is coming that way, and that was a real good opportunity for him to get a tackle for loss. And a career high 14 tackles, nearly an interception, forced a fumble last week. He's definitely the centerpiece of this Spartan D. Second down to Ioti. Plenty of time down the sideline, and he can't connect with Marcus Williams, his big target tight end. They've got two really good tight ends in this game today. Derek Deese Jr. and Marcus Williams for New Mexico. Marcus Williams was challenged by Danny Gonzalez when he got here. He said, hey, we played against him, and I, I told him he needed to be more physical. He needed to be tougher, and he feels like he's going to show that this year. Third down and one. With Crest the motion man. The freshman Jace Taylor, a big target in the slot at the top. Tuioti. Defenders around his feet and he gets it off complete to Kyle Jarvis, the senior. And this New Mexico offense, you would not know. They haven't been on the field against an opponent yet. Well, they were able to maintain and allow him to step up into the pocket. Kyle Jarvis was in because Marcus Williams was on that long run. The problem with San Jose's defense is they don't get pressure. That's the one area they struggled last year and have to improve this year. First career catch for Jarvis in his second year, the transfer. Toyote pulls it down and he throws complete. It was Wooden who had it. The ball is loose. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Bobby Wooden never had it, is the call. The hit and a big one from Trey Jenkins. Yeah, Trey Jenkins came up. He has a twin brother, Andrew, but he laid the wood. Really that RPO game right there and wide open in the middle of the field. Just a good, solid tackle by Trey Jenkins. It looked like the ball was moving a little bit. He yeah. took a couple of steps, but I don't think he had it clean. The official coming from behind automatically said no, and I don't think he ever had complete control of the ball. We may take a look at this. Mike Catone, our referee. The ruling of an incomplete pass is under further review. So Richard Brown from the booth, our replay official. 
Lofton has been very on schedule today. You can see here long play fake ball handling. He gets the ball there. From this angle it's going to be tough to see but I agree with you guy the ball was bobbling and they called it an incompletion on the field which makes this tough to overturn. With Charles Arbuckle I'm Guy Haberman we get our first look at uh, a replay in this game and a review in this game. I'm with you I think it's going to be yeah. tough. The, the one thing you know too now is everybody plays past the whistle in case the replay booth ever has to look for a clear recovery. It looked like he never had complete control. But you're right. I think as a player, you see that, you know, making sure that you just go all the way through, that you don't stop. The question is going to be the control because he, he takes two steps here. I mean, he's he is now, I would say, a runner. Now, I yeah. do think San Jose State recovers this, Charles. I think you're right. If we can tell here. But initially, there was a player that came in. I can't see his number. And then another one came in. Now they're taking a while. Sometimes when they take a long time. They may say that's. Let's see. It looks like Johnny Balderas, but you know what? Now he doesn't have it, so I don't think he did. Number six is Balderas. Does he maintain possession here? It looks like I he, would say he does. Yeah, when he went down, he did the perfect execution of putting it away. Remember, the call on the field is an incomplete pass. But the longer they look at it, guy, this is when you start thinking there's a potential that it can be overturned and that it was a catch, fumble, recovery by. Catches it. Mm. Yeah. And you know, the, I, <laughs> and the other thing, too, is you also have to think about when you look at it on instant replay, slow down as opposed to the real speed. You know the, the other thing and I, and I know I, I said I thought it, it was moving but is it moving because he doesn't have control or because he's just tucking it away. Let's see. After further review the calling on the field stands. Second down. Right, calling on the field stands is what Mike Catone said second down Brent Brennan doesn't like it. His defense had two takeaways last week. They've been really good in the takeover game. They were plus 10 last year. So far this season, plus one. The biggest thing for them is getting pass pressure and also stopping the run. They have not been a good run defense other than last week when they really were good against Air Force. Held Air Force to 206 rushing yards. Emmanuel Logan Green, the wide receiver, is the man standing behind Bryce and Carroll behind Tuioti. It's Carroll going nowhere. There's Kyle Harmon, the junior linebacker from nearby Antioch, California. Started his career career briefly at Cal. Then came to San Jose State where he'd been recruited out of high school, and uh, he's been an instant force. Shot in the A-gap, run blitz. You get there, get there quick. You see the football on his right arm? Just love playing ball, right? Uh, excuse me, on that left arm. Came in and made a huge play for this San Jose defense. Couple tight ends in the game, both at the top. For Tuioti on third down. 15 to go. He'll pull it. He can run. And he goes into a pile down into the 30, make of the 29 yard line, shy of the first down. So, God, that's what you really want to do in that situation. You have three rushers, and then you know he's going to take off if he has a lane. Make sure you keep him in front. One, two, three, four. Guys, five guys right there to make sure he doesn't get that first down. And so now the field goal attempt from the walk on, making his debut, George Steinkamp from Los Alamos, New Mexico. From 47 yards, and it does not get there a little bit wide to the right. And Steinkamp can't connect. And so that's where San Jose State will take over. You know, we talked about in the open Nick Starkle a young man who started his career at A&M and then Arkansas and the officials are having a discussion we'll see if that delays Starkle's arrival here We've had a couple making sure they're all on the same page Number 85 in the offense that penalty would decline San Jose State first and ten. And so Nick Starkle replacing the Mountain West offensive 
player of the year last year, Josh Love, who was a big part of the recruitment. And Nick Starkle, the young man, three years at AM. Then Arkansas, a two time graduate transfer. How about that? It's interesting when you're able to find a home, and another home, and now your final home, you hope. Starkle's first pass is complete to Bailey Gaither, picking up right where he left off last week when he matched a career high. Eight catches for 110 yards against Air Force. From the 37. Starkle hands it off. Shamar Garrett, there is the true freshman from the powerhouse high school in the Bay Area, De La Salle. They love this guy. Yeah, they think he's going to be a really good player in this offense. They rotate a lot of guys. Kyrie Robinson, Tyler Nevin, but Shamar Garrett is one that will call a lot today. He'll get some opportunities to make some plays. His old high school teammate at De La Salle, Kyrie Robinson, now has checked in after that first down run. Starkle, good pocket, and there he dumps it off to Robinson, speeding for a first down, delivering a big hit into the secondary. These, these two teams are looking for contact. Yeah, they are. You talk about not getting much contact. Rocky Long's 3-3-5 three, three, defense usually gives you problems, but the one area when I did film study, you can get out into the flat. Kyrie Robinson saw that and was able to look up a defensive back, beaten, and try to run him over. Robinson remains in the game, stands beside Starkle. Starkle dumps it off underneath. There's Trey Walker. They really wanted to get him involved. As Cameron Miller helps Starkle up, you take a look at San Jose State's starting lineup as they move quickly. Trevor Robin starting again at center this week. Jack Snyder, bit of force at left tackle. And this is a prolific group. Derek Deese Jr., the tight end, a couple of touchdowns last week. Back to the freshman, Garrett. And he's near another first down. And we take a look at the Lobo defense. You mentioned it, Charles, at 3-3-5 for Rocky Long. It's uh, the defense he's made famous. Brandon Shook, the starter middle linebacker. But Tavion Combs, the true freshman, what makes him so important today? He's everywhere. You're a spinner. You're a Lobo. You can go make plays with abandoned aggressive and be about seven or eight yards off the line of scrimmage and come up and make plays in this defense. He wears number 16 in that cherry red. Starkle under pressure, lofts it. Garrett could not adjust to it. The ball's a little underthrown, and who is right there running with him? Latavion Beaton. Jarek Reed was coming off the edge, number nine. You're gonna see him. He's able to get in there quick and not allow Nick to fire that ball down the field. He had an open receiver in Garrett but not enough on that throw. That's, this is what this defense does now. They're only about 10 to 15 percent completely in. They don't have all their packages, but they're going to show you a lot of stuff pre-snap and then give you some mirage. Going for it on fourth down, spinning, and I think short of the stick. I think he Didn't is. get there. This play to me took way too long if you're going to run this. And I really thought they would go with something maybe to the tight end real quick hitter. That, that just did not look good from the very beginning. And Rocky Long's defense for the first time out does a nice job. Look at him in the middle, just blowing everything up. And then you have one free guy off the edge. Whenever you have that, that's a tough thing to, to manage. The run game is the whole key for San Jose State. They didn't do it well enough last year, Brent Brennan said. They didn't do it well enough against Air Force. They didn't have a lot of opportunities against Air Force because of the way they the time of possession, but they have to capitalize on those particular plays. So New Mexico's second possession after a missed field goal the first time, and Bryson Carroll a couple of yards. The other side here, this is a big deal for San Jose State. The defensive line, something they really tried to beef up this year. They talked about all these defensive linemen when they went away from COVID and were away and they were Zoom meetings. They could tell guys were just putting on some weight. Hoko and Ka Ka Kiva and Paul, they all were just gaining some weight because they were really working out and eating more. Mom's cooking. Second and nine for Tuioti. 
on the move and right on target. Second catch for Kyle Jarvis and another first down. This game has had a good pace. Well, I, I can tell they're using 12 personnel, meaning two tight ends. And you think Derek Wareheim, he was a tight end, a special teams coach for most of his career, and a little bit of offensive line. So they're going to run a lot of 12, which he did at Texas. Now Jordan Press has come back into the game at the top of the screen for New Mexico. Toyote will give to Carroll, and he's stopped up, stays on his feet, and then eventually on the second effort, he didn't quit, neither did Viliami Fejoko. Fejoko held him up, and I thought he was going to bring him down, and Bryson Carroll said, no, look, 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 let me show you I can run through your feet. The thing that they do well, wow. I'll tell you this with San Jose, they strip the ball. The Spartans go after the ball consistently. He did it that time. Unfortunately for him, he didn't have Bryson Carroll to pick up more yards. Three yard, four yard loss on the play. Toyote, there is Emmanuel Logan Green, gets a couple of nice blocks, and then gets swarmed down across midfield. Trey Jenkins with a big hit, first man there. The guy, and talking to both of these staffs, they kept talking about the physicality. Now, see, the offense works one way. They go to the right, and then they come back to the left with the Manny Logan Green, who is out in space. They want to get him in air and make him try to tackle him. That was a nice pickup on a second and long. Make it third down at about four. tight ends in the game the new running back is Bobby Cole first time we've seen him this afternoon and now Logan Green comes into the backfield as well this is Cole bouncing it outside and getting upended Number 34, Nehemiah Shelton the starting cornerback for San Jose State and now it's fourth down and here comes the punt unit yeah, Nehemiah Shelton only about 170 pounds but he'll come up and hit you this is a one-on-one -on -one matchup and he just lowers his head and knows that he has other guys coming from the inside. Really good technique by him knowing I got this tackle, I have inside contained help. Let me make this tackle and stop them on this third down. So now one of the best punters in the nation, Tyson Dyer, the oldest player in the Mountain West, at 28 years old, the right-footed Aussie, to punt it away to Bailey Gaither back deep for San Jose State. He tries to send this one into the corner. And instead, he sails it out of bounds. Around the 20-yard line or so, it'll be San Jose State ball at the 16 in a scoreless game. Fox College football is powered by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Good to be here in San Jose. This game originally scheduled to be in New Mexico because of the COVID-19 situation in uh, Bernalillo County where University of New Mexico was this game Monday. The two teams and the Mountain West decided to move it here to San Jose. New Mexico had its game last week at Colorado State canceled. Nick Starkle to throw and Bailey Gaither a quick connection. His second catch of the afternoon. Real good pass protection with the stunts and the twists up front. The one thing that this 3-3-5 will do to you, not only for Nick Starkle, but for Trevor Robbins, they have to identify pre-snap and then wait because there's going to be something else that comes from Rocky Long's defense. You see that creeper right there coming in. That's one of the things you have to look for. Tyler Nevins getting his opportunity now in at running back. Starkle with the pocket collapsing around him takes a deep shot. He overshoots Isaiah Hamilton, the redshirt sophomore. What do we hear this week? You're going to see maybe two deep shots a quarter. And again, you can see the pit framing. You got the center, but you got also off the edge. You got to stay protected because they'll keep coming after. You now, Danny Gonzalez said one of the big goals this week: get bodies around Nick Starkle. Even if you don't get to him before he gets rid of the football, just make him uncomfortable. The greatest game of Starkle's career came three years ago as a member of Texas A&M when he threw for 416 yards and four touchdowns at Kyle Field against the Lobos. This time he completes to Trey Walker, who gets the first down, and it's big to get Walker involved, particularly on that third down conversion. 
But you can see there, every time a receiver catches the ball, they're going to try to punish him. And that was a nice catch by Trey Walker. He's the first down maker, about 70% on his career, right? Every time he catches the ball, it's usually a first down. And he was one of the best receivers last year just in volume. Caught eight balls a game, but last week only four targets. Isaiah Holiness with his first touch. Now, guy, there's a T.E., and what happens is that's an end and a tackle on a stunt. It leaves a hole for Holiness, who they nicknamed the Pope. One of these young men that can really play some football out of Redlands, California. A receiving threat as well. He's at the bottom of your screen, line number one in blue. Starkle looking the other way, and a long throw is complete right near the first down marker. About a yard shy. Jermaine Braddock on the catch. Sorry about that. Antonio Hunt. One of those. He's probably the best cornerback right now with this ball club. He and Nick Wilson get the start at the cornerback position. They're going to be challenged by this receiving crew. San Jose. Nico Bolden out. Dante Martin missing two games for academics for New Mexico. They are very thin at cornerback. Six first-time starters on this defense here's Gaither again steps through and gets across the 40. What are they trying to fix? Well this 321 yards allowed per game last year. Danny Gonzalez said this week if that happens again I'll give every penny back. Yeah he was adamant that they were not going to get gashed again like that this year. Second down and five. Pressure coming. Starkle gets rid of it, but his receiver slipped and fell. That was Trey Walker. Yeah, one of the things this offensive line is on a good job of counting numbers when they can see things coming at them. Trey Walker is there. Nice throw by Nick again. Good break again by Antonio Hunt. That's going to be a good matchup throughout the course of this game. Starkle has started 7 of 10. Incomplete. He was looking for Isaiah Hamilton that time, and racing over was Jarek Reed. He never set his feet really on the move. You've got to stand there and fire it. And he had Isaiah Hamilton there for him. Ball sails on him. And the drive stalls out, so on comes Elijah Fisher. From my pitching days, guys, whenever I would fire out, I'm a lefty. <laughs> I didn't know where it was going to go if I opened up too much. I didn't keep that shoulder down. A crafty lefty. Flag, on the flag. flag down. Emmanuel Logan Green lets it fly into the end zone. Lefties have that natural movement on the, on the baseball anyway. So. <laughs> Plus you had the heat. I could, I could throw, it, throw it a little bit. Flag is right at midfield. Andy Gonzalez doing all this stuff for the first time. I mean, he's been around football his whole life, been around Rocky Long for almost 20 years. But Rocky Long told us this week, he said, when it's all your decision, it's a whole different animal. But it does help to have him as counsel. Here's Rocky Long, the winningest Illegal coach in the Mountain West. formation on the defense, number 55, lining up over the center. Five-yard penalty. Result is the first down. Wow, that's a huge one. And that's that's the kind of stuff that happens the first game you play. Generally, when you are trying to get things going, your special teams, you, you pay attention to it. But this is the situation right there. You have to make sure that you're clean on certain things, and usually special teams is what's what you what you struggle with. In an effort to protect the center, you're not allowed to line up right over him. And that's what Elmer County did. And so back comes Nick Starkle. And Danny Gonzalez said he expected a few things, just given the lack of continuity in New Mexico's practices. Here's Holiness. Takes a big shot. Brandon Shook was the first round there. Now, we talked to Rocky Long this week, and Shook and Holiness keep going at it, and now a flag comes in. Yeah. 
A little bit of John going on at the end of that play. Holiness has nowhere to run. Look at all the contain. You've got really good defense. Nowhere for him to go. Brandon Shook is right there. Mm. And then Holiness throws that right hand. Yeah. I wonder if that's what the officials saw, if they saw the whole lead up. One thing we know, we, we know the whole defense isn't yeah. in. We know this isn't the total 3-3-5 personnel. But there's a certain way a Rocky Long, Danny Gonzalez defense play. They play with a chip on their shoulder. Everybody you talk to that is either coached with Rocky or played against them and coached against them, they'll say this defense may not be where it needs to be, but they're going to fight you. And you can see that right there. And getting to the football is a consistency that you want to have. Uh, you know, when he was a UCLA defensive coordinator, San Diego State really started with Oregon State because he just didn't have the talent that he wanted to have around him and was able to help those guys become better. After, after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 46 on the defense. Also unsportsmanlike conduct on number one of the offense. Those penalties were offset, second down. Again, I'm okay with that because I think they're trying to contain both of these guys. You've got a team in New Mexico who we would have seen last week against Colorado State. Didn't get that to happen. They've, they've had to try to work around it. You've got a San Jose State team that has beat them pretty soundly last year and want to show some dominance there. I think we're going to see this kind of thing all night with some physicality. It shook the redshirt senior, one of the loudest voices on this defense. Danny Gonzalez told us and he's helping set that tone of aggressiveness today. So second down and nine after the offsetting penalties. Shamar Garrett is back in the game at running back. But Starko throws over the middle complete to Isaiah Hamilton. He was third on the team last year in catches on a passing offense that was fourth in the country last season. 388 yards a game. That's what San Jose State did. Josh Love was the Mountain West Offensive Player of the Year, directing traffic. Another completion. Trey Walker again. And guess what? Another first down. Trey Walker out there and Derek Deese Jr. going to block him. I think the real key for this offense, too, when we talk to Kevin McGiven, you're going to see protection is a must. You have some gains on the inside, but Nick Stark will able to get the ball out. And you have to have secure tackling. But the thing is, this staff has seen this 3-3-5, so they're comfortable going against it. The defense doesn't really know consistently what they're going to do in New Mexico on offense right now. Starkle off to a good start. Here comes pressure. And there is the first catch of the day for Derek Deese Jr. <laughs> Hard to bring down, the big man, well, son of the old pro. What, what did Coach Brennan say? I wasn't sure. He didn't. We knew he was going to be a, a tight end, but he didn't know it yet. Goes up. The catch radius is the one thing he talked about. You almost wish, like he said, ah, on that one, I wish I wouldn't have caught it because I only got one yard. <laughs> 13th play of the drive, aided by a penalty on the punt. Holiness cannot quite get away oh, by oh, Elmer Pounty. Oh, great play by 55. Took a shoe and one of the socks. I see a guy lose a shoe, but he lost the second. Oh, that's his towel. Okay. Pounty. The Pounty doesn't make. He's going to knife in here on a stunt. He just sees it and recognizes. See, big, big 55. He's coming across the edge. You've got the end coming in, the tackle, he, which is he, and he's coming there and makes a really nice tackle on a running back. Third down and 10. Lobos bring pressure. Pounty backs out of it. Starkle taking a shot. He's got Walker! And he brought it in! Touchdown, Spartans! Flags on the field, a lot of hand fighting, but for the moment, Walker's on the board, 37 yards. Yeah, that all comes because you handle the pressure. You have pressure coming at you, and that offensive line stands in there and allows Nick Starkle to throw a strike to Trey Walker. Great job of going up and getting the ball. I told you, he and Antonio Hunt are going to battle all game long. The penalty is against the defense. There's only the play is a touchdown. He's happy now. Yeah, Four yeah. targets last week. He wasn't happy. They said they could tell his body language was saying, look, I'm here. I'm, 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 I'm invested, but I'm not happy. <laughs> and I'm sure he's happy with the opportunity to go up and get the ball on out. That's a reason he's on the Bolitnikoff watch list. A 37-yard touchdown reception. Eighth career touchdown for Walker. 
10 games with 100 plus yards receiving in his career. And Air Force defense really focused on him, took him away. And I think you're going to see that with this as well. We're going to take a look at this. Does he maintain as he's going to the ground? Does he survive the ground? Yeah, I saw him completely secure the catch all the way through. Remember, the ball can touch the ground as long as the receiver has control of it. The verbiage they like to use, the ball not moving independently. For a few years, we didn't know quite what a catch was. <laughs> but you think we got it straightened out now? I think we got it straightened out now. Well, as a receiver guy, you're always taught to get up and show the ball. I don't think, it, it, even if the ball touched the ground, it was secure on that left shoulder, in my opinion. But they look at every, every play, every scoring play in particular. Danny Gonzalez told us as we take another look at this. And that was Let's Antonio see. Hunt was right there. I mean, they, they called a penalty on him. The ball touches the ground, but he has it secure. You see what I'm talking you about? You think he's got it pinned against his body there? It looked like it. I mean, it's clearly, that's a lot of ball on the ground. Now, that could be the one thing that they say. Did the ball, did the, ball help, did the ground help him secure the ball? But it, again, when you have that, right, you call it a touchdown. You've got to have every thing to overturn it. When we saw this initially, it looked cleaner and clearer. All right, you're one for one. Uh, our first yeah. review, you got right. What do you stake your reputation? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bucks I, rep I, I'm on this I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to call it a catch because I'm a receiver <laughs> by trade. But I also think even on that other angle that we saw, like you said before, the ball can touch the ground. It was not moving. It was secure. And I think they call that a, I think they keep this a touchdown. I could see if you're a Lobo fan watching this yeah, thing. You, I don't think he caught it. I understand that. But again, yeah. do you have enough here to overturn it? That could be it right there. Great job by the camera crew of showing that. Dan Gonzalez told us uh, we could play great defense and give up four big plays. We just don't know about our big play stopping ability. So let's see. Did they just give one up? After further review, the ruling of a catch and a touchdown stands as called. Touchdown. Your reputation <laughs> remains intact. I, I was sweating a little bit, but I was pretty secure in the fact that he had both hands on the ball. He secured it and turned it for six. The guy you put me on the spot saw 2-0 right now. And and rem no. Remember, a drive extended because of a penalty yes. on New Mexico on a punt. Special teams penalties usually hurt you in your first game. Matt McCurio, oh, tacks on the extra point. So with 30 seconds left in the first quarter, a Spartan offense that was held scoreless for a half last week. With a big strike, Nick Starkle looks good. <laughs> 14 plays, 84 yards, a 37-yard touchdown to Trey Walker, who has as many catches in this quarter as he had all last week against Air Force. Four. Third touchdown pass in Nick Starkle's Spartan career. And now Chris Wood will kick it away. Bryson Carroll. Got to pick it up now. And he and Davon Vigilant swarm around it at the eight-yard line. So that's where the Lobos will begin with a seven-point deficit. San Jose. I'll tell you what, I got more candy in this booth. Oh, I do too. <laughs> but I don't have to do it. Uh, used to raid my kids' bags when they were younger. Snickers, that's what I was always doing. That's number one, huh? Yeah, that was number on the one. depth chart. This drive begins at the eight yard line with Tuioti getting his pass deflected. Might have been two Spartans that got a hand on that. Yeah, they're really trying to look at his eyes and make sure that was Trey Webb, I think, was one of them. 
They're really starting to get a beat on this offense now. Like I said before, this is a new offense. The same, a lot of the personnel is there, but almost three guys. Trey Webb was one of the ones, number three, to go up there and knock that ball down. The Dari Darden right there with him. So after a long San Jose State touchdown drive, tough position here on second down and 10. Three man pressure almost gets to Tui. Oh, D, and he throws complete to Jordan Kress. How about the determination of that young man to be ready this week? Well, you've got Tuioti again. You're showing has some time back there. Good protection. Only three men coming. But Jordan Kress with a nice catch there. Big play weapon for him last year. Had six touchdowns on the year. We're going to look at this play. And they may because he came down with the ball on the ground and it hits. Just before the end of the quarter. The previous play of a catch is under further review. All right. Gives us a moment as we look here. Now he catches the ball. It hits the ground, but he secures it again. This is the same. It's very similar, but you can see more of the ball hitting. But he holds the ball again consistently. I didn't see any movement of it. Very similar. Didn't look the same, but the same discussion same. Yeah. we had on the touchdown. And I would say again, from the naked eye, I thought it was a catch. Again, as you said before, the ball can touch the ground. It's just a matter of do you secure it when it hits. It's worth repeating yeah. the value of press to this team, and we'll get a resolution on his ruled catch next. All right, Mike Catone, is it a catch? After further review, the ruling of a catch stands as called. First down. I said catch from the beginning. I wasn't going to change my mind on it. <laughs> three for three today. <laughs> Two seconds remaining in this first quarter. To try and get this snap off. They do. So final play of the quarter. It's to about the 24-yard line. Seven nothing. San Jose State. The debut of the Lobos in 2020. One quarter in the books. College football is powered by Ram Trucks, built to serve. It's nice of Buck to have us out at his uh, winter home there last night. For dinner. <laughs> Take a look at the first quarter stats. It doesn't feel like the time of possession was equal, did it? It really did. But like New Mexico had the ball a little bit longer even, at, at times. A second down and seven here to begin this quarter for Tavaki Tuioti. And this New Mexico offense. And there's Cress again. Well, they are feeding him. We thought he might be limited today, but they have tried to work him in whenever they can. Derek Wareheim said that we've got to get the ball. We've got to be balanced on offense, but we also got to get it to our weapons. Good job of looking one way and coming back. T really nice job there in getting the ball off on schedule. They're down in two, but nowhere for Bobby Cole to go. This, the bulk inside of this defense has improved, and you can see it on that right there. They were not budging. The interior of the offensive line, watch. There's no movement there. Blue jerseys just getting across. You can see Big Noah right number four. There's just a lot of mass inside when you got all those big guys in there you can't move around and welcome back Tyson Parker who didn't play last week just because yes. of the matchup against Air Force but a big stop there so Tyson Dyer is on to punt again Bailey Gaither back deep and this will have some good hang as Gaither fair catches it no flag this time 54 yards on the punt Nick Stark will come back on the field
you get on the Blitnikoff watch list two years in a row? Well, you do it by being Trey Walker, fourth in the nation last year in catches per game, first team all league, started the day fifth on the San Jose State all-time receiving list. He's already moved up to third today. He had a 1,000-yard receiving year last year. He does it again. He'll become the most prolific receiver in Spartan history. Yeah, he wants the football. <laughs> you know, he and Bailey Gaither have a healthy competition, and they just get after it. Nick Starko has two really good weapons, and then he also has a tight end group as well with Derek Beast Jr. They connected on a 37-yard touchdown on the Spartans' last drive. It's Starko and uh, Walker. The whistle was blown before that play got off. The flag is down on the far side of the field. Cam Miller with a nice tackle. Prior to the snap, full start on number 10, offense. Still first down. Well, if you're Trey Walker, you're like, I, I got yards to make. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to get, get on the get on the right side of it. Brent Brennan, who last week when New Mexico's game was canceled, more whistles here. Brennan was the first one to call Danny Gonzalez. They've gotten to know each other a little bit just through the Mountain West coaches Zoom meetings over the last several months, and it seems like there's a mutual admiration there as these officials are going to discuss. Let's look at the penalty first here. Top of the screen, Walker is 10. Just a flinch. Yep. Just a flinch right there. Correction. Will the clock operator please put 13.52 on the clock? 13.52. And those are the ones for the receiver that the coach, his position coach, is going to say, come on now, Trey. Well, you almost have a pot for that. <laughs> Kevin Cummings, the wide receiver coach, is going to be like, look, we can't have those. That's taking yardage away from us, man. Walker's at the bottom crossing the field as Starkle throws it to Garrett out of the backfield. And Shamar Garrett races for a first down. One of the areas that I could see, even with this defense, is if you get things moving and you sneak your tail back out, Shamar Garrett right there, those two tight ends move. No one goes outside. That is where you have to protect. And you can see, not able to get there as Tavian Combs, the Lobo, has to recognize that and make sure he's there on the receive, on the running back. 19-yard play. Start goal. Could not get it to Walker. He thought he was bumped by Jarek Reed, who was there in coverage. Yeah, there's some there's some ways that you can attack this defense, especially with the youth. They don't understand it. This is new for them. This is the first time they're playing in it. And you want to go after guys like Tavian Combs, who's a, a freshman, but he's a really good player. Brandon Shook is one of those guys that has to be a leader today and make plays. Second down and ten. Starkle gives holiness who just came into the game spins forward for eight yards and that's another play where you have the Lobo coming up but he takes the wrong gap and holiness is able to identify that and hit the other guy he goes a gap holiness goes B gap nice pickup Combs the first true freshman to start on defense for the Lobos in seven years fly down on the play three one so Starkle will lob it for Gaither who adjusts but he can't bring it in Nick Wilson right there in coverage. Good job by Nick Wilson to playing that through. This is going to be offsides on the defense. Although they're having a communication that someone move on the offensive side. Flags on both sides of the field. Unless it's Trey Walker again. If they, did they catch Offsides. Him? Number 95 of the defense. Five yard penalty. It's Jake Saltonstall, the uh, sophomore junior college transfer. You know he wants to make an impact today from the Bay Area. Went to Foothill Junior College <laughs> near San Jose. But it almost looked like Devin Sanders was the one that really was number 19. He really came across, and he was going in the same, similar to where Saltonstall was. It gives San Jose State a first down. So they'll try to go back to the ground. For holiness. Yeah, the one thing that they had talked about, Kevin McGivern said, hey, we've got to run the football better. And that's one thing that they're committed to 
but they've got some weapons. They're going to attack this New Mexico defense as well. New Mexico is now starting to back off and use some of that cloud coverage, quarters coverage, to take that away. Quick towards the stick complete, Jermaine Braddock, the first down. Starko's been on point today. Yeah, he has. He has found, usually this makes it tough for the offensive line and the quarterback, but Starkle has just been able to find his weapons. Had not worried about who's coming down for coverage and who's coming down into the box. He's just finding receivers and giving them the football. He was a 54% passer last year in eight games at Arkansas. Pressure in the pocket, and this time he goes down. Ben Bertram for the sack. The first of his career, the Albuquerque native. That's not only his first sack, that's his first tackle. Yeah, nice job by Bertram was staying with it. He was blocked up, but just stayed, kept going, kept hustling. That's what you have to do as a defensive lineman. Keep getting after it till you get home. This is one of the best teams at preventing sacks last year. They didn't give one up last week against Air Force. They were fifth in the nation last year, the Spartans. Pressure again, but on the screen. That's Garrett. Takes a couple of hits, and he can't slip away from Brandon Shook. That was a wall that Garrett ran into. Shook and a few other guys. I mean, this screen was set up nice, and I thought it was going to go for a lot more yards. You see, you let guys go free. Bertram is there. He pushes the quarterback down. No big problem. But look at this. Boom. I mean, Shook takes on a, a, a lineman, gets him out of the way, and then makes a tackle. Wow. His defense doesn't look like it hasn't hit in two and a half weeks. Or maybe it does. Well, maybe that, they just that, hit one, you. that one right there, he laid the hammer on Trevor Roberts. So now third and seven. Starkle with time. Lofts it to the end zone. Touchdown, San Jose State. Isaiah Hamilton brings it in. Yeah, we used to call these dropping in the bucket. I mean, Nick Starkle with the outstanding throw over the defense into, you gotta have protection first. You know this defensive line is coming, but look at this. He's gonna just drop it in the bucket. And this is a great throw by Nick Starkle in between two defenders to Isaiah Hamilton. Outstanding throw, outstanding catch by these two. 43 yards. Second touchdown, second big play for Starkle. The question is, are we going to look at this one, too? Of course, every scoring play is reviewed, but the ball might have been moving a little bit there for Hamilton. I think he kept it on his body, though. And it looks like the replay official agrees. So Matt Mercurio on for the point after. Fourteen nothing Spartans. Two big plays for touchdowns. This one belongs to Isaiah Hamilton. Give him the belt. Who said Aaron Rodgers was ready to retire? He didn't have any weapons, bro. Right? <laughs> He's playing like lights out right now. It looks incredible. 14 to nothing after another big touchdown throw from Nick Starkle. And Bryson Carroll brings that one out to about the 16-yard line. This offense has to get going if, they're, if you're in New Mexico. They've had some fits and starts, but they've got to get a real consistent drive going here. The other thing is I haven't seen much Marcus Will Williams. One attempt to him so far. Got to get him involved in the game as well. He plays 84 yards. So a 37-yard touchdown throw and a 43-yard touchdown throw for Starkle. New Mexico's had some tough starting field position in this game as well. Toyota is keeping this one. Now he'll pitch it. That's Emmanuel Logan Green, the wide receiver, coming out of the backfield with him. Well, Danny Gonzalez told us that the one thing, as you look at the replay of this play, the one thing that's keeping him up at night right now is the fear of the big play. Yeah. And we just don't know how many big plays his offense has in it. That's exactly right. Trey, Trey Webb with a nice, uh, Trey Jenkins, excuse me, coming down 22 on that play. But he's worried about giving up the big play. 
Toyote complete. You called it. Marcus Williams right on cue. Give it to the big tight end. Nice job in that seam route, just getting down the field. Easy throw and catch for the quarterback. You're going to see him coming to the screen. It's an easy throw and catch. Now they go fast, and this is an opportunity for a huge play. Mayo Logan Green cuts it back across midfield and down inside the Spartan 40. He has the Bayou ability. He's going to get by you if you don't tackle him. That's the one thing. He's quick, and you get him out in open space. That's why they use him in so many different ways. I thought maybe he's from New Orleans, yeah, Fort well, Lauderdale. Well, you can be from the Bayou, or you can have Bayou. <laughs> San Jose State will take its first time out, catch its breath. One thing we've talked about is you've watched college football. How much has tempo affected defenses? It's affected a lot. We've talked about it on the back end of this. Coming up the State Farm halftime show with Rob Stone, Brady Quinn, Reggie Bush, and Matt Liner. Talk about Mel Tucker ingratiating himself, knocking off Michigan, his first Michigan State win. Plus, what happens now with Clemson? Out of the timeout, Tuioti. Big shot for the touchdown. Right back in it, Cedric Patterson. A 39-yard connect. I wasn't sure if the ball was going to get to him, but Cedric Patterson was gone. <laughs> Tuioti barely got it out to him. No pressure, just couldn't get the ball off. Like, well, actually did have pressure, but just really couldn't get the ball to him. But, man, Cedric Patterson was gone. Johnny Balderas, the nickel back there, got beat on that play, and that's a huge turn of events for New Mexico. We wondered if they'd have the big playability to match after missing the first attempt of the game. On a field goal attempt, Steinkamp hits that, and it lands safely in the All-State good hands net. New Mexico's sweet life within seven here in the second quarter in San Jose. Cedric Patterson, the redshirt sophomore, with the first New Mexico score of the season. Now all three scoring drives, one for New Mexico, two for San Jose State, all three of them are 84 yards. Oh, wow. It's Halloween. Go figure. How'd it happen? So, guy, when you look at this, you can't look in the backfield. You got the cornerback, you got the receiver. You gotta stay away from your eyes. Have to you have to trust your eyes. Look at him. He's gonna look inside, and then you know when that receiver's there, he's even, he's leaving. And Valderas knew it as well. Patterson was just saying, hey, get the ball to me so I can score six. You got to trust your eyes and play that better. But that was a nice job by the receiver of getting open and the quarterback almost not getting it to him, but getting it to him for a completion for six. And that was out of a Spartan timeout. So back to Nick Starkle, and he gives it back to Isaiah Holiness, who's brought down after a pickup of two. Devin Sanders pulled him down. Part of it was the tempo you talked about. Three plays, they went really fast and didn't allow the San Jose State defense to set. And even after the timeout, they weren't settled enough to stop that big play. Empty backfield now for Starker. Over the middle, into traffic, and Derek East Jr. brings it in. Seam route. Starkle knows where he's going to find him. You go to the hash mark, you throw it right there. Look at Derek Deese Jr. right there catching the football. A big receiver who's learned how to grow into his body can block also. I'm sure his dad was out there with the pads and just knocking him around as a kid. <laughs> a former 49er, the All-Pro Super Bowl champ. With Derek Deese Sr., there's Bailey Gaither. And you're seeing tempo now against Rocky's defense, which doesn't let you get settled. It, it just, it's a tough thing to do. All defensive coordinators talk about this. Practice-wise, guy, they just say, we're going fast, fast, fast. Sometimes we don't get a chance to correct guys, but it also just doesn't let you have your proper fit sometimes. And this is a New Mexico defense that is already in a position where they're trying to play their first ball game. You feel like we're seeing more of it? We're seeing more. The tempo of offense? Yeah. I mean, obviously, not just because that's what offenses do, but given how much fitness could be a factor here with the limited preparation time. 
I, I think it's one of those things where you have to make sure if you're a team that you work on the physical nature of it. And if you haven't been able to tackle, so you think you're ready fitness wise, but you're not ready football fitness wise if you're in New Mexico. They haven't been able to tackle for about two and a half weeks in Albuquerque. They've been practicing in pods of five. They're actually going to prepare for the Hawaii game. They play at Hawaii next week. They're going to go to Las Vegas. They're going to bust to Vegas on Monday. New Mexico will. They'll practice at the Sam Boyd Stadium there, the old UNLV facility. There's Walker riding him down. That time was Tavian Combs. That's and, and who knows whether or not they'll play their next home game in Albuquerque or somewhere else, or maybe even Sam Boyd. We'll see. Well, that was just a prime example right there of a missed tackle. And not knowing where you're going to be, I don't think they worry about it. Danny Gonzalez and Rocky Long said, hey, we're going to play well. We're going to play in the parking lot if we have to. But the big thing is making sure the guys are prepared to attack. Starkle, long throw. Coming back to the ball, though, was Braddock reaching for the chains. It does have the first down. How much defense did Rocky Long say they have in right now? About a tenth of what they have. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey. God, that was a good job right there, Braddock, be, being friendly to his quarterback. Because that's a long throw, like you said. But in order for you to take, cut the distance, you have to do it as a receiver. From under center, a little play action. Starkle looking for Deese. He's got it. Flag down. Touchdown, Spartans. Well, there might have been a pick on the play. I think we might have OPI on that one. It was taking a long time to develop. I think Trey Walker is going to come back. You'll see him coming to your screen. Deese. South interference. Offense, number 10, walking downfield. 15 yard penalty. Replay first down. We're just under the left goalpost on this replay. Deese is coming right up the screen, and then he's going to fake out. Really nice job of setting up the post corner against Tavion Combs. But right there. Right up, you can see the block. That was a matchup they wanted to have against a young guy and a big receiver. You can see uh, Trey Walker was getting too much of the defender, Antonio Hunt. But we don't see them going to center much. They probably thought all week in practice they had a touchdown on that, huh? Here's Gaither racing through half the defense before he hits a wall of 35. Well, I love how this New Mexico defense flies to the football. You know, <laughs> I, I, I agree with everything I've heard them say. And I think the one thing, if you're San Jose, you look at this guy and you can say, look, we see this defense this week. We're going to see it again next week against San Diego State. That's right. And that, that's the same. They're going to run the same defense, even though it's not Rocky Long using it. But it's one of those situations you're getting the test this week. It's Brady Hoke and the new defensive yeah. coordinator there, Kurt Maddox. And with personnel made for it, this flags fly on second and 15. I think Jamie Navarro. Ball start. Number 54 in the offense. Five yard penalty. Still sucking down. <laughs> He's not happy there. It's like I'm in a, I was in a rhythm. He was feeling it. Yeah, Jamie Navarro was just a little quick on it. So now second and 20 after the five yard penalty. We need to get down to about the 19. Starkle. Just a nice easy throw to Gable. Boy, he really took a little. That's that yeah. uh, Arbuckle changeup. It, it really looked nice. And I think the other thing is this offensive line has just allowed him to almost feel like a seven on seven. He's had a little pressure. But when he hasn't, he's been able to just stand in that pocket and fire the football. It was a very good offensive line last year. Only allowed Josh Love to be sacked 14 times the entire season. Now third and manageable. Free play. Flags fly. Let's try Walker again. And he's out of bounds. Even though he caught it, he did not land in bounds. He's saying he did. <laughs> Great effort. And Off sides. Number 98 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. We play third down. Joey Noble, one of the best players up front, but also first-time starter. I think the thing is, Nick Starkle is doing a nice job of getting him off. <laughs> when you got a quarterback that can do that, it's going to make it tough for the defense because you want them to set and reset. Now, i got to tell you, I didn't believe him. But you thought he, yeah. Well, his toe hit, but I don't know if he had the ball yet. Trey Walker's 
begging for a review and they're going to look at this. His toe definitely touches down. I'm just not sure if he had possession of the ball yet. Take another look. Yeah, he goes up. Toe comes down. Man, is that possession? This sure. Oh, my goodness. A great effort. You're three for three on review, <laughs> so now the di degree of difficulty is going up. Yeah, this one is really tough. He has the ball. His toe is there. I don't know. That, I would say they may overturn that. Trey, Trey sold it, but he did a yeah. nice job of body control. It all set up by them getting offsides and getting the free play. Because the defense has to continue to play, but usually as an offensive player, you know, okay, I'm going to go down the field. Homer Smith was great at this. We would do freeze plays. And Brett Brennan and I, we, we talked about it. He, he worked under Homer and Rick Neuheisel. And these are the things, that, and then the toe tap, the ability to get your toe down as a receiver. I'm going to give him a touchdown on this. So Look you think it. right there he's got possession? He's got the ball. Because he tucks Foot. it away. Foot comes up. I'll, I'll tell you, if, if the ruling on the field is touchdown, that then is, I think yeah. it stands. The ruling on the field was incomplete. And he knew it. He knew it right away. Wow. He's looking at the brand new video board going, look at that. It's huge. It's a touchdown. <laughs> He's already got one. Walker already has well, a 37-yard touchdown reception in this game. Well, you've got to let him go through the continuation. And the ball is in his hand. When does his foot come up? Okay, let's look right here. He goes up. Ball's in his hands. Foot is still down. Okay, so when does it come up? That's what you're saying. Comes right? up, and he's possessing the football. You gonna make a call? Touchdown. Three, three today. Oh, okay. I'm going to touchdown. All right. Because of he did everything you have to do to continue to catch. I thought, and, and guy, you called it right away. Him going yeah. up. I might have called it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> They're on the sideline jumping. We, we've seen multiple angles. Great job by our camera crew of, of getting, getting all of that. To further review, the ruling on the field has changed to a catch and a touchdown for San Jose State. Trey Walker, <laughs> give him another. <laughs> you don't get what you don't ask for. Touchdown, Spartans. Trey is going into sales. Some kind of sales because he sold that, but he also did a nice job with that toe tap. That was outstanding. Again, all set up by Joey Noble and the defensive front coming offside in a free play, basically, and Nick Starkle and those guys executing. Say, do not doubt me again. <laughs> That wow. was a concern for Danny Gonzalez and Rocky Long. The big play ability of the San Jose State offense. At 26 yards, that's the shortest touchdown pass that Starkle has made today. Did that sneak through? It did. Mercurio using every inch of the goal post. Easy to smile about it now. And this was all started by the free play Starkle taking a shot and trusting Trey Walker well and also he gave him some room to work on the sideline as a quarterback and they do this all the time this is one of those things where you practice Trey I, I want you to do this and Bailey Gaither they all practice this but it was executed perfectly on a free play we have defense jumping off sides and you, you attack the defense which they've been doing all game long And this is a good answer if you're the Spartans because New Mexico came down on that last drive and scored easily and efficiently. Now New Mexico has the, the ability with six minutes and ten seconds to do that again. It's a great call because if that's not a touchdown, it's a third down that's coming up for San Jose State. Mm -hmm. Maybe a mistake that time by Carroll. That ball looked like it might have been headed out of bounds, which would have been a penalty. Affected him from earlier when he bobbled it before. He was in a situation before earlier on a kickoff and didn't get the ball cleanly.
Coming up next on FS1, the final game of a huge college football Saturday kicks off. Nevada taking on in-state Mountain West rival UNLV. Keep it here on FS1 and also streaming live on the Fox Sports app. And that's going to be huge. That is the first college football game inside the Death Star, the beautiful new Elysian Stadium in Las Vegas. The battle for the Fremont Cannon. <laughs> Meanwhile, we had a penalty uh, applied. Best starting formation. Yeah, best starting field and position for New Mexico. Nicole was out of bounds before he, he did not carry it out with him. All right, so not a mistake by Bryson Carroll. That ball was headed out of bounds. He caught it out of bounds, and that's why the ball is out to the 35. And now we're going to look at <laughs> Take it. Take another look at it. Well, I, I will say this. It affected him before because he was in a position on a previous kickoff where he was not able to field it cleanly. And I'm thinking he's saying, okay, I have to go get every single ball and not worry about it because it's a free, it's live once it's in the air. Bryson Carroll is this inbounds or out of bounds when he catches it. <laughs> Again, he was struggling with it a little bit. He had to didn't catch it cleanly. But he starts the catch in to fill the play. Hmm. Right now the ball sits at the 35, but I'm with you, like he starts in the field of play and then he bobbles it and goes out of bounds. Okay now before this time our producer Woody tells you no. in your ear what happened you have to make a call. I'm going to make a call that he starts catching it in bounds and fill it cleanly and then goes out of bounds. Yep. And that was about the yep. I think it was about the 15 yard line. So that's so we're talking about a 20 yard play or so here. That's a huge difference. I think that's going to go back. Yeah, they're bringing that back. Being told maybe it was even the 12 to the 13 yard line. This is a big, and, and, and starting field position's been an issue. It has been. For New Mexico today. Now that last drive, they didn't care. They just took off and started making plays. But again, I think part of the mentality of Bryson Carroll, and we'll talk about it after we hear the official. Mike Catone. I prefer to review the receiver touch the ball in bounds. However, the receiver also signaled for a fair catch. Therefore, the ball will be ah. spotted at the 25-yard line. First All right. Down. So, not so bad. Smart by got a half Bryson a half Carroll. A point on that, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you a no contest, okay? <laughs> That's a push. Right? In this age, you get a no contest on that. <laughs> he, he did signal fair catch. That's fair. So it comes out to the 25-yard line. Big scoring drive the last time out. And this is Carroll taking the handoff. With not a lot of space. They've done a pretty good job against the run today again. Second week in a row. The Lobos only have 23 yards rushing. The big thing you have to do here is make sure you protect your quarterback. But as you see, Tuioti does have just about 150 yards passing in this first down. On second down, he's still got it. He's got plenty of space. He'll just pull it down, run towards the stick. He gets pushed out by Hadari Darden. Yeah. Derek Odom was saying this is the one thing we have to guard against. <laughs> Tuioti gets outside. He just he's magical with that football and able to run it. That is a first down. Now he gives to Carroll. And he runs right into the back of the offensive line. And the thing for him is just staying healthy. That's been the one problem for him. Not being able to talk about Nick Starkle. He still has a couple of years of yeah. eligibility because of some of the injuries and some of the other things. That's right. He could be a seven-year quarterback. He came in and redshirted in 2016. Played as a redshirt freshman in 17. Got a... Uh, injury redshirt in 18. So last year he was a redshirt sophomore. So he could be, Tuioti could conceivably be, because this is a free year, remember, 
the quarterback in 2022 at New Mexico. Lofts it down the field for Andrew Erickson. He caught it. In traffic, Erickson comes back to the ball, and the freshman hauls it in. Again, you get your cornerbacks looking in the backfield. DBs that pump fake holds them, and Erickson just stays with it. Nice job. 46-yard play, right back to the line of scrimmage, right back to that battering ram. So basically, Bryce and Carroll. Tuyoti is going to get a PhD, right, <laughs> in football. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You heard of the all, you remember the all-time quarterback when you were a kid? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Carroll again, nowhere to go. He never could get that clean. And that's the one thing in talking with Tui Oti, he's saying, you know, really leading the team and doing all the things he had a chance to talk to him. Somewhat quiet, but when he talks, oh. his team listens, right? He, he seems to have a real good handle. He, he and uh, Cam Miller, right? really, really good talking to both of those guys. There really was. And, and one thing he said, you know, a lot of guys have been nervous around the building because Danny Gonzalez will walk in. He might make you sing the fight song. <laughs> On cue, and you better be right. He said, but not me. I'm, I've known the fight song for a few years. I'm not worried about it. The first down. Trying to hide behind him. They need to get to the six-yard line to pick up the first. Into double coverage, and Williams can't bring it down. Ali Matau was fighting with the big 6'3 tight end. Yeah, you had Nehemiah Shelton there, too. Both in that vicinity, knowing big 88 is going to try to go up and get the football. So what do you do here? Fourth down and four. You know San Jose State's been able to score. There is a flag. It's going to be first down. So they won't have to worry about yeah. fourth down decisions. Big penalty by San Jose State. Giving them a, a first down and opportunity to get this ball in. Like I said, you had to answer that touchdown. And so a fresh set and an opportunity for Tuioti. Roughing the passer was the penalty. As Bobby Cole has nowhere to go. Goal line defense after last week against Air Force. This is through a Spartan specialty. But again, the roughing the passer was the penalty that renewed this drive. Let's look back at that play. Balls out. Gotta, can't, you gotta let up. To Leami Fehoko. Emmanuel Logan Green is the deep man behind Tuioti. He pitches it. Logan Green tries to cut it back. And he gets maybe a yard. And so now it's third down. Kyle Harmon, the first man there. When the Air Force tried this, there were multiple guys getting to the football. They just did that against again right here. If you see the option, then the next week you see it again, this is where your eyes, you trust your eyes and know, okay, okay, if you pitch it, we're going to be there on you. Second time out taken by San Jose State. Let's go back to last week, the moment that Brent Brennan told us was magical in a scoreless game. Four tries from inside the five, three tries from inside the two. This is third down, Air Force no. So then San Jose State called a timeout. And Derek Odom, the defensive coordinator, said, protect the wings. Yep. And you can see right there, the edge was going to be what they went after. And that was similar to what we just saw with Manny Logan Green trying to get outside. And that defense just flowed, filled with the ferocity to the to the ball carrier. The difference last week, they had ages of Air Force's offense to film study and yeah. expect that third down play. They don't know what Derek yeah. Wareheim is going to do here. But that was the second time or third time they've seen that play. Yeah. So they knew something was coming a little bit different. Derek Odom, you mentioned it earlier, he got the game ball. The locker room erupted last week. Meanwhile, for New Mexico, they've been scratching and clawing. If they can find a way into the end zone here before the half, it feel like a big relief. Toyoti is going to keep it himself, and he gets pulled down by Harmon. No gain. Fourth down. Yeah, Harmon just, he recognizes where the ball is going to be. Committed to Cal. You know, he dropped an interception last week. I think they're going to go for it. But watch 45. I mean, he just sees it and recognizes it, gets around all that trash. Boom! 
That's great football being played right there. Going for it again. This could be another situation where you stop a team on fourth down. Marcus Williams, the big tight end, is at the bottom of the screen, and Brent Brennan comes racing onto the field. Yeah, they, they were going to go to Marcus Williams, I think, right there. It was a mismatch. This is their third and final timeout of the half. Call, good timeout. 30 second timeout. Correction. Full timeout. Good timeout right there because you're in a situation where you know there's some matchup issues and you're not sure what you need to do on defense. And don't forget, coming up, the State Farm Halftime Show, Rob Stone, Brady Quinn, Reggie Bush, and Matt Leiner. A lot to talk about. Clemson survived today. A huge comeback win. DJ Uyunglele, the freshman from Southern California, Bosco, and you know, Bruce Feldman said this morning on the pregame that he thought there was still a chance Trevor Lawrence could come back and play for Clemson next week. Yeah, I just I guess saw, Notre Dame. saw something right before we got on air that that's probably not going to happen. But I got to see Uy Langale a few weeks ago when they played Miami live. And he is every bit as what advertised. And I think they are excited about having him really learning behind Trevor. But now he's going to get a chance in some big time games to play. Wow. The National Player of the Year in college football in high school last year. He looks like a man. Meanwhile, here a fourth down play. Two tight ends at the bottom of the screen for New Mexico. Tuioti looking that way. Throws. Open touchdown, Andrew Erickson. His first career score. I told you they were going to try to set up the tight ends, and they had both of them split, Jarvis and Williams. But the nice thing is from the backside, Andrew Erickson is going to come into your screen. Two tight ends to the left of your screen. He sees that. He's able to keep the play alive, and then come right back in, throw it a strike right into Erickson. Erickson, the third-year freshman, himself a red shirt, then a knee injury last year. The former walk-on earned, earned a scholarship. One of the two Erickson brothers on this team, an Albuquerque native, playing for an Albuquerque native. His head coach Danny Gonzalez and the New Mexico right back in this game. And Danny Gonzalez told us he expected that there could be some penalties in their first game. So the question is, does it, did, did his team jump first? To live game. Number 41 in the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Try still to go. Maybe Hadari Dart, and they call that the, like, disconcerting Penalty signals. has been declined. Yeah, sometimes. Like shouting. <laughs> yeah, probably sometimes so. Sometimes that becomes a delay, but and it looks like, it was. Looks like the San Jose defense is a little tired, too. They, they've been challenged by this New Mexico offense. Yeah. The last two drives, they've been able to just march down the field. Tuyoti almost 200 yards passing on the day now. Camp, who nailed his first attempt at an extra point and he hits number two so New Mexico just will not go away every time the Spartans land a punch the Lobos swing back take another look at Andrew Erickson's first career touchdown he's making himself available and getting lost in all of that stuff to just says okay I'll find you show me your hand let me know where you at. <laughs> His younger brother, Austin, a true freshman on this team. They've got some talented receivers on both sides. Both of these teams have some guys that can make plays. And both of these quarterbacks are taking advantage. Almost 475 yards of passing between the two quarterbacks so far in this half. Donovan Murphy kicks that one into the end zone. So 206 for San Jose State. No timeouts. But uh, they've got a hot hand at quarterback, Nick Starkle. Look at what he's done the last three drives. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. 37 yarder, 43 yarder. We talked about him yesterday, right? Yeah, I mean, he, his worst game. When he was with Arkansas, came against the San Jose State team. Last so, year. Yeah. 
after yeah. five picks. It comes full circle. Sure looks like he's home now. Four man pressure. Starko back to Walker, who caught the touchdown on the last drive. Trey Walker now with seven catches for the game. That one only results in about a yard of progress. Yeah, Jared Reed, really nice play. As soon as the ball gets there, he's on. Again, no timeouts for San Jose State. They used them all on the. They used the last two on defense, and that's behind Deese Jr. He was actually trying to throw the, to, to Deese Jr. away from the defense. Deese Jr. kept going inside. That's why they couldn't connect. And he had pressure coming. Cam Miller was on it. Meanwhile, if you're in New Mexico, you're thinking, we're going to stop here on third nine. We got all three of our timeouts. San Jose State will get the ball to start the second half. Start them. Through the hands of Walker, who had to be distracted by Antonio Hunt, who flashed in front of him to try and intercept it. Really nice job by Antonio Hunt coming into the screen right there. Just, just gave enough to not let Trey Walker get comfortable and catch that. He got his hand on it more yeah. than distracted him. A really nice job to change the trajectory a little bit. That was a big play for New Mexico who has all of their timeouts. So Elijah Fisher to try and hang this one up. Fair catch called for. But a minute and 31 seconds. And like you said, Charles, all three timeouts for Tuioti. If they score here, I'm, I'm going to give a big kudos to a couple guys on defense. Jarek Reed with that nice tackle, and then Antonio Hunt with that play right there. Those were when Cam Miller was trying to get home on every one of those pass plays. Fox Bet Super Six is giving you another chance to win one million dollars. It carries the money. Last Sunday, three players came oh so close. So the million dollar prize is up for grabs again this Sunday. Download the app, play for free, and make your picks for this Sunday's game. Can New Mexico tie this game before the half? Toyote under pressure gets rid of the ball just a moment before Viliami Fehoko gets to him. Williams' first name is William and Tonkin. <laughs> well, that's not a whistle. They're just going to pick this up and run it in. Hold on. <laughs> Trey Jenkins. They did not blow the play dead. Sophomore out of East Palo Alto, California. That's the problem with this defense they had, but they showed there some pressure. The officials are discussing this. Any question in your mind as to whether that was a pass attempt? It sure looked like it to me, and I don't know. Second right. down. Yeah. So they did rule incomplete. Perhaps we did not hear the whistle. But... Can get that play clock reset. No, we're not going to reset it. We'll look at it. So the ruling again, even though we saw it play out, the ruling on the field is incomplete. We do know that we have a clear recovery from San Jose State. goes back and he's trying to throw the football. That's a it's like a forward pass to me. This is our sixth review? Yeah, I think so. All right, so we'll get you on the you're, I, I'm, you're I'm in going, early. I'm going precinct, pass, Charles yeah. Precinct is in early <laughs> on this one. Forward I pass. mean if we if we have any other angle, please show it to me. But I, I really thought he was releasing the football. Mike Platone, our referee. Been pretty good today, so. You have, yes, I'm you have. stay hot. I got the hot hand. I got to keep going. <laughs> Take another look. Yeah. This is on coming forward with the ball in it. It looked like it there. I don't think, I don't, and not, not any doubt in my mind. The ruling of an incomplete pass is confirmed. Second down. Good pressure. Hoko. 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 Hoko, excuse me. Nice job of getting there and getting home. The, the, the problem that they've had is getting pressure on the quarterback, yep. and that's one of the things they've been talking about. That's the first hit on Tuioti of this game. 
So now second down and 10 after the incompletion. Still all three timeouts. Tuioki a yard shy of reaching 200 passing in the first half. Emmanuel Logan Green out of the backfield. If he gets out of bounds at the 40. Yeah, they're trying to do some different things to get pressure on him to get him to get the ball out quickly. T.O.T. was able to get that one out quick. Manny Green able to pick up some nice yard. And get them in a shorter third down situation. How about the choreographed signal right there? <laughs> they were on, on cue, right? <laughs> on the beat of the music, too. <laughs> Third down. Fehoko flushes him out of the pocket again. That's an incomplete pass. <laughs> he, this drive has been off the whole time. He was like, I'm trying to get home. And then Lando Gray got his hand on it. Lando Gray back from injury. Those two guys were in his face. Did not give him a chance to set those feet at all. 42 and 90. Really coming quick. Nice. Actually knocked that ball down, Lando Gray. And right, so we're going to have another possession. How many possessions can we fit into the last <laughs> 150? It was Tyson Dyer, who had a 54 yard punt in his last time. This is Gaither. He did not so try to fair catch that. And he's going to race out of bounds at the 19. We do have a flag down on the other 35. They, they did a nice job of messing around there. Making the kick, personal foul, face mask, number 46 of the receiving team. Capilano will be enforced half the distance to the First down. He made you think he wasn't going to catch it or mess with it, and all of a sudden gets under and gets some yards. It's all for not, though. Because it checked up on Tyson Dyer. Yeah, both of these teams have struggled in, in the special teams area with just playing clean in that area. We've got some penalties. We've got some balls that can't get. 46 there. Christian it's, Webb. Yeah, Christian Webb. It's a takes hand. Makes his face mask. So no timeouts, 107. New Mexico didn't use a timeout yeah. on, that, on that possession. Well, and given the field position here, I got, would you start using your timeouts defensively here if you're the Lobos? Well, I mean, in all intents and purposes, you know from a standpoint so far, San Jose has not been able to run the football effectively. Yeah. If they throw it, that stops the clock. So whatever you do, don't take those timeouts with you. The question is, do you throw if you're the Spartans? That's probably the better question. They've been doing it a lot and doing it effectively. Stark was thrown for 273 yards today and out of his end zone. There's holiness. And he stumbles forward for a nice gain on first down and gets him out of the shadow of the end zone. Seven different Spartans have caught a pass in this game. Yeah, they're using the passing game to become an extension of their run game. Starkle again out of the backfield. And this one's close to the first down marker. Shy of it, though. Tyree Robinson couldn't stay in bounds. Now this, the block. Yeah, this is interesting now. If they don't get this first down here, New Mexico will have a chance to, because they have their, all three of their timeouts. They get to stop here. They get the ball, potentially get the ball back with some time and two timeouts. Start goal incomplete, and the clock stops with 33 seconds. So they took, what, 34 seconds off the clock on that possession, and New Mexico didn't have to use a timeout. I thought for sure one of those plays they would run the football to kill some time. And Starkle yeah. comes off holding. He you didn't look see good. his side. Yeah, he was struggling to walk off the field. Now Elijah Fisher. Has to punt it out of his end zone. Lobos will try and set up a return here for Emmanuel Logan Green, who will back away. And so three timeouts and just over 20 seconds with the ball at its own 44-yard line. And meanwhile, they're checking on Starkle on the Spartan sideline.
don't think we can get another possession in. I don't think so. Time, I, I, I don't. I don't think Ooh. so. Look at that. Yeah, he's not moving comfortably. You can hear him say as he came off the field, something's not right. He ran by one, went right by one of our microphones. Tuioti here goes down. Sack back at the 35. First sack of the game for San Jose State. That's going to feel like a big one. They've been trying to get there all game, and now they were finally able to get a sack. Looks like this is going to. Aid Hall got it. In this half. The story, story now is Nick Starkle. Yep. After a fantastic first half, Starkle 25 of 34. 281 yards with three touchdowns, and yet New Mexico right in this game. We'll know early in the second half because San Jose State will have the ball first. Tuioti, a great first half in his own right, over 200 yards passing in this Mountain West matchup. Big hits and big plays so far in San Jose. Coming up next is the State Farm Halftime Report. Football is powered by Ram Trucks, built to serve. We get ready for the second half on this Halloween, a 21 to 14 San Jose State lead. And today's Ram Power Players brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. How about the connection, Charles Arbuckle, of Nick Starkle and Trey Walker? They have been simpatico, synergistic, whatever you want to say, they have done it. And that was a nice job by Nick Starkle of also getting it to Isaiah Hamilton, dropping it in the bucket. But this play right here, this is a big-time play by a big-time player. And then he sold it. And Nick Starkle is happy about that. Trey Walker, now the second year in a row he's on the Bolitnikoff watch list, a couple of touchdowns. He only had four targets last week. He's got seven catches, 11 targets so far tonight. The biggest issue, he's not looking good though. Nick Starko went out at the very end of the half and his back, something his lower half was bothering him and Nick Nash is warming up right there next to him. And, and it certainly could have happened earlier than yeah. when he came off the field, but the play that preceded his exit was not a play on which he took contact. So there's the sophomore from Irvine, California, Nick Nash, who played last week against Air Force. The plan for him is just to have a, a package. They plan to work him into games anyway, but he has not thrown a pass this year. And Nash did appear in six games last year, but primarily as a running threat, not as a thrower. So they wanted to bring him along slowly and give him some opportunities to work into the, the game plan. But this might be one of those situations that if, even if he doesn't play right away, he has to be ready. So let's look back. He's going to, that's Starko there, trying to throw the football a little bit and see how he feels. This was two series before he came off at the end of the half. And maybe it's that hit that later brought him off the field in pain. That's Cameron Miller. Was hit him. Yeah, he was starting to heat up. Kate Miller was getting after him. And, you know, he, he it, it looked like he was starting to finally get home the next start. So here's a young man who started his career at Texas A&M, played three years there, then a graduate transfer to Arkansas last year, and decided he was going to transfer again. Didn't think that he'd necessarily be able to graduate transfer again to another FBS program. He told us, I thought I might have to go FCS or maybe to the CFL or try and make it to the NFL. He got approval, and so you are not going to get Nick Sarkle after that long road <laughs> out of a game easily. And it looks like he's preparing to come back on after a shootout in the first half. One thing, guys. Between he and Tavaka Tuioti. Sorry Charles. about that. Yeah, the one thing that the, the Spartans have to do a better job of is to protect Nick Sparkle and whoever's playing quarterback. That 26 yards has to change in this half. That's been their thing. They haven't been able to run the football effectively, and that must change in order, no matter who's playing quarterback in that time. So the Spartans will start with the football here in the second half. Shamar Garrett, the true freshman, spinning his way near the 30-yard line. 
take a look at how good they were in the first half. San Jose State on offense. Three straight big strike touchdown drives. And it will not be Starkle. So he's going to walk off. You saw him pat Nick Nash on the back and send him in. And you know this has got to be painful physically and emotionally for Starkle to have to come out of this game as well as he was playing. So now Nick Nash who threw 17 passes last year. That's the total for his career and flags fly before he can get his first play of the night off. Always happens when you have another quarterback. The cadence is a little different. False start. Number 62 of the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. And you think about it. These guys didn't get to practice that before the half. It always happens at the the next guy comes in. It's always you're a little bit anxious to protect him. But you also have to get his cadence, get his rhythm, because you've been in rhythm with Nick Starko this whole first half. So now behind the sticks is Nash. He's going to run it. And he gets about three yards back. So what you have to do now, if you're a receiver, anytime there's opportunities, you've got to make plays. This offensive line has to come off the football. If I'm, if I'm New Mexico and Rocky Long, I'm bringing pressure because he hadn't shown me that he could throw the football at all. He, he was six yards a carry last year. In fact, 255 yards. He was second on the team in rushing last year, Nick Nash. This time he flips it out to Gaither and well overshoots him. And now he's got a third and 12 coming up. Yeah, trying to get him an easy throw, something where you've got somebody crossing you or you can just look it to him pretty easily but even here your first pass a little bit too much on it and that's one of those things now you don't want to compound it so to speak put him in, in a good situation get it to one of your receivers hopefully they can break the tackle and New Mexico is going to be coming on this play Devin Sanders showing pressure and he comes good protection Nash Cannot get away from this Lobo defense, and so off of the bench comes Nick Nash in a three and out for San Jose State. The guy Trey Walker had a chance to block Antonio Hunt to potentially give Nick Nash that first down. He couldn't get back and peel back, and that was Antonio Hunt who made that tackle. Elijah Fisher to punt it away. Emmanuel Logan Green is back. And he's going to back off of what was initially a short kick. Takes a small Spartan bounce. It goes out of bounds at about the 30, a 36 yard punt from Fisher. Changes the game a little bit. You can see early on there were some struggles with New Mexico, and then they got their rhythm going. See what they can do on this, on this first drive. Tabaka Tuioti who has one 300-yard passing game under his belt in his career. Threw for 205 yards. Over 17 yards per completion in the first half for Tuioti. He's going to throw. And now he'll pull it down with some space. And he lunges for about an 8- or 9-yard pickup. Yes, Darden coming in late, but he's able to do that. That's what, if you give him a little bit of space and he sees it, that nine yards gets huge. Look at that dual threat number, one of just seven FPS quarterbacks last year with over 1,400 yards passing and over five yards of carry. He'll give it off here. This is Emmanuel Logan Green again. The pursuit is waiting for him. Tyson Parker with another tackle. This defense just does a really nice job if you try to get outside. Watch all these blue jerseys work to you just keep contained, you keep contained, you get everybody flowing and filling to the football and making tackles. But third and short is easy for New Mexico. How about that? Bobby Cole didn't encounter a defender until he was 16 yards down the field. They got them with the quick snap. They're going tempo again, and that's what got them going in the first half. Everybody on the inside, Cole sees outside, he's able to pick up a nice game. It was 19 yards in total. Here he is again. Good haul for Cole down inside the 40. This defense is tied. You can see him getting pushed back. And I think that pressure and that 
I mean, you can see guys' hands on the hips already. This is early in the half. San Jose State has hit three big home run plays, and yet New Mexico has just refused to go away. And all of a sudden, even with an deficit, it feels like maybe they've got a little momentum. Another handoff. And that time, Parker, the first man there, a flag is down. Adari Darden also in the backfield on Davon Vigilant. Let's check on the flag. Tyson Parker was waiting to play this week. <laughs> he was anxious. Number 28 didn't get a lot of work last week because of auction football. Seen a lot of Mike Catone tonight, our referee. Here you got holding number 78 of the defense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Wow, that's the seventh penalty against San Jose State in this game. And that's when we just talked about your defense getting tired. And you're just reaching out. You're trying to keep those linemen from moving. You got to let go at some point. He can't climb to the next level. That's why Tyson Parker was set free. So Ani Toya committed that penalty. It was the team that didn't play last week that's been cleaner from a penalty standpoint. New Mexico just with two. The tight end Marcus Williams faking the block and then he comes out and catches the pass from Tuyoti and he gets cut down inside the 10 yard line. Nice adjustment from the big man. Nice play design too. They really show everything in front of you get the defense going. You see Kyle Harmon and everybody else and that gets Marcus Williams wide open. And on first down they hurry to the line but not much movement. Guy, I would say if I'm New Mexico. And I'm Derek Warham. I'm tempo. I'm going tempo the rest of this quarter because it doesn't. It seems to get them going, but also doesn't allow San Jose State to settle down and really make their calls and make their adjustments. First year as a coordinator for Wareheim. Last three years he spent at Texas with Tom Herman. Was the Houston offensive line coach for two years prior. He's got Jordan Crest in the backfield with vigilant. It's going to be Crest that takes the handoff, looking for the pylon, and he is down at the half-yard mark. Oh. I want you to watch this block by 11, Cedric Patterson. You may not get a chance to see it because they're going quick snap. Now Crest remains in the game. Vigilant the back. Vigilant, no, to Eoti. He launches in. And New Mexico marches right down the field on its first possession of the second half. Tuioti with great ball skills right there. You've got everybody thinking I'm handing off. No, I, I'm going to pull out. Watch this. Great design. And he sees that guy coming down hard and knows if I take it, I'm scoring six. This was all set up, I think, by tempo and then the ability to go fast and keep that San Jose State Spartan defense off balance. It's now George Steinkamp who met with the coaches in the spring, asked to walk on. We'll have an opportunity for a point after, depending on uh, this review. Remember, all scoring plays are reviewed as uh, Mike Catone goes to the headset. But if you play for Danny Gonzalez, what do you say? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna play fast and furious. We're gonna be physical. Cedric Patterson, the play before the touchdown with an outstanding block on the edge. To allow Jordan Press to get out there and almost score. What, what would, uh, do we have five reviews of the first half or six? I think it was five. <laughs> I think it was five. Maybe there's some and, questions and, and to whether. And I understand everything has to be reviewed, but a lot of times they will make the call and go forward. We're getting a review. Let's see, Let's see, just see the, yeah. Let's see here. From that angle, it looked like he got in clean. Let's see if there's anything. Ruling else of the touchdown is confirmed. You're taking credit on this one. You should. Six I, I for did. six. Well, sometimes you get a BP fastball, you hit it. <laughs> touchdown. When you have that edge that goes away, and you see that as a quarterback, you're, at, you're, you're able to pull it and get in for six. So Steinkamp, the 
sophomore walk on. Missed his first field goal attempt, but has made his first PATs. And he's three for three. Tied football game. They came out of the locker room, seven running plays, and pounded it down the field to knot it up. Happy Halloween. The Lobos, you know what their costume is tonight? They're dressed like the home team. They wore their red cherry home uniforms. This game was supposed to be in Albuquerque. And uh, it got moved here to San Jose, a decision between the two teams and the conference. As Shamar Garrett fights his way out to the 20-yard line. New Mexico did not play a game last week. They were supposed to go to Colorado State. They were not able to travel. That game was canceled. And in part because of the prevalence of COVID-19 in Albuquerque and the surrounding area, we do have a flag, as well as some of the uh, state guidelines. This game was relocated here to San Jose. The Spartans are the home team, but both teams, we don't have UCLA, USC. That's the end of the Pac-12 schedule, but we do have red and blue on the field together. That's a good look. It is a good look. And I think both teams. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 15, New Mexico. The 15 yard penalty would be enforced from the end of the run. There's number 15, number uh, first unsportsmanlike conduct. First down. Octavion beaten. Again, two of those you get disqualified. That's why the referee tells you it's his first. Beaten, given 15 free yards. And you're given a, a team that has struggled on offense. Now, some new life. Nick Stark will back in again. After sitting out that last series. Wow, so Nick Nash started the second half because Starkle in some pain. And here he hands it off. And just by him being in this game, creates a little running room and several efforts that time to get nine yards for Kyrie Robinson. That was a really good run by Kyrie Robinson. He's got to come out now with Tobin coming off. That's the thing you have to do when your quarterback is in this position. And you haven't run the football well. Two tight ends now. Billy Bob Humphreys, who didn't play last week, enters the game for San Jose State. And Starkle throws, but it's dropped by Trey Walker with that huge first half, seven catches, including two touchdowns. Just two plays where Trey probably wants him back. Starkle's coming out, Nick Nash is coming in, and he's not doesn't look. Like he can really move effectively. He's a third down and short now. Nash was 0 of 1 throwing the ball on his first drive. And now under pressure, he completes that to Billy Bob Humphreys. And that's a big play. Maybe San Jose State can take a breath after that big connection to move the chain. They've got some really good tight ends, and this is another one. Billy Bob Humphrey, nice job by Nick Nash. He tried that earlier, got it to him. Good blocking out front and allowed him to pick up some nice yards. Bailey Gaither out there picking up that block to give him more yardage on that play. And now Starkle back into the game for San Jose State. Holiness clears out. Starkle. Nice connection with Gaither that time. Very near another first down. The offensive line knows, okay, if my quarterback is hurt, I got to give him time. Look at that. Clean pocket. What does that look like? Nobody there. Nobody touch him. And then Bailey Gaither, you do what you do best. And one thing San Jose State is used to working Nick Nash in on offense. That's part of the plan anyway. So that part perhaps does not throw off the flow of the offense. There's holiness right through the middle for a first down. And I'm sure Alonzo Carter and that off, you know, running back group now says, okay, we've got to be effective here. Our offensive line, if they create holes, we've got to find them. After New Mexico tied the game. The Spartans connect here, Walker again. Can't quite slip away, but getting the block that time from Isaiah Hamilton. Tavian Combs comes over and lays a boom on it. Well, Antonio Hunt taking the Well, if you thought after the trouble with Nash and the New Mexico offense that San Jose State would try to slow the game down and 
work clock. We've gotten a quick answer to that, haven't we? Starfish. Here's Holiness trying to cut it against the grain. Holiness carries. But God, part of it is their, their ability to run the football. That's given them a, another dimension that they didn't have. You got nine yards by Kyrie Robinson. You're picking up some positive yards. Anybody that's playing back there, and I think that's made a difference for this offense. It's Holiness back there now. They were only two and a half yards of carry in the first half, but it's been better on this drive. Starkle to throw again, and that was off the shoulder pad of Hamilton, who had a defender right on his back, Latavion Beaton. Hamilton already with a touchdown in this game. As you see Starkle's numbers five yards shy of 300 for this game as he jogs off. On fourth down, and now Matt Mercurio will come on to try and kick a 35-yard field goal. He was one of one last week against Air Force. He did hit the goalpost on an extra point in the first half. But that's true. And so San Jose State gathers itself and gets back in front. Eight minutes to go here in San Jose in the third quarter. Fox College football is powered by Ram Trucks, built to serve. We've had a hard-hitting two-and-a-half quarters here in San Jose. And the Spartans with a nice answer. Charles after a three and out to start the second half. New Mexico marches down and ties the game. San Jose State with a field goal. Really, you have to figure out what is going to work best with Nick Starkle being a little gimpy. Chris Wood will kick this to Bryson Carroll. And he'll get up to about the 23. Do you think we'll just see more of this kind of rotation of quarterbacks, Nash and Starkle from the Spartans? I would think so, unless his back feels better. I would think, in, especially in situations where you need possible legs to, to run, they would do that. And that they already have a package for him, which works in their favor. Did we get a hint on the last drive that maybe New Mexico is going to try and wear out the Spartan defense in the second half? It really looked like it. I mean, right away, you can see everything is a run. And that line coming off, no blue jersey, knocking them off the ball. It was an eight-play scoring drive. Seven rushes on that drive. And, you know, we talked to Danny Gonzalez, the new head coach, making his head coaching debut at his alma mater, New Mexico. It's really a great story. Of course, long-time assistant for Rocky Long, but he spent the last two years as an assistant for Herm Edwards, the defensive coordinator of ASU's defenses, and he helped it make great strides. And he picked up a tip that was painful for him to learn, but really helped him here these last few months. Second down and long. Toyoti steps away from pressure. And now he's just going to race for the stick. And he's going to get there. First down. Good run by Kavaka Toyoti. And Herm Edwards runs an NFL style camp, right? Ones versus ones, not the scout team, and no hitting. Yeah. And Danny Gonzalez told us it was miserable to not hit. But I think it's helped him with what they are going through right now. He and Rocky Long, because they're both physicality guys, and it allowed them to understand what they needed to do to get this team prepared to play the football. He was forced into treating it like a pro NFL practice, which is what Herm Edwards had done for two years at Arizona State. What a Good strong run there. I also think you can see the freshness of his players now that they're in the rhythm of the game. And that offensive line has taken over. And they're really running a lot behind the Outland watch list candidate, Titan Saltis. Big, massive man at 6'6", 322 at the right tackle. Honorable mention all league last year with Saltis. Second down and short. Logan Green cut it half immediately. Boy, that was red perfectly. And there's Sadari Darden again. Yeah, that was a nice job. They've run this play a few times where they send the direction of the offense going to the right and then throw back to the left. 
Logan Green had had some opportunities, not that time. Darden came off of the block by Jordan Press and went in there and made a nice tackle. Three of eight on third down is New Mexico in this game. Bryson Carroll stands beside Tuioti. The big tight end Williams in the slot at the bottom. Tuioti pulls it down. Misses the first tackler, but then the Spartans swarm. Ali'i Matu'u, the first man there. Matu'u right on point in that play. That's the one thing when you have a quarterback that can move. If the first guy missed, you got to have the rest of you coming to make sure you secure everything. Matu'u has made a couple big plays in this game on defense for San Jose State. Now they get a stop. And Tyson Dyer has been really good. And he's good again as Gaither has to fair catch that punt. A 40-yarder that time. So we'll see what happens at quarterback for the Spartans with the lead when we return. Take a look at the stickers on the back of the San Jose State helmet. You see on the left there that first logo. That's the logo of the POC committee. The People of change voted upon by the teammates and Black Lives Matter uh, taking on issues of social justice within the team and the community and also you saw the green H to appreciate Humboldt State and San Jose State's uh, state school sibling and Humboldt State even though it doesn't have a football program anymore Trey Walker with a big catch Humboldt State's played a critical part in the Spartans season as Starkle was slow to rise after that play when local rules did not allow San Jose State to practice. They went up about 325 miles north and practiced at Humboldt State for two weeks. All coaches have had to address that. Brett Brennan was on, the, on our Zoom call brought that up and we'll talk about it a little bit more after this play. Isaiah holding this right there with a nice run, but the one thing that got me is he said, when I go for a run in the morning, I don't have to worry about getting shot like the kid in Georgia, Ahmad Aubrey. He called all his players, he got his leadership council, and they really worked through the process of understanding not just what are we going to do right now, but how can we move this forward? And I thought that was, any coach I've talked to, and they have a plan like that, that means a lot, especially at a school like San Jose State where you have had a lot of of, of social justice and issues of what they've worked through over the years, even going back to 1968. Here's Starkle, and he throws complete to Bailey Gaither, a first down for San Jose State, and he gets across midfield and to the 44-yard line. They had, a, as a team, of a peaceful march. It wasn't just this team. It was 22 of the San Jose State sports to City Hall at one point. That's part of a, a San Jose State Speaks Up program here at San Jose State. But two weeks at Humboldt State seemed to be nothing compared to everything that everyone and certainly this football program directly has dealt with over the last several months. And they've taken the issues of uh, social justice head on. Starkville, too high for Walker. Yeah, and I think that's the one area that Nick is struggling with to get the ball outside. We've seen a high even before he was struggling with whatever's going on in his lower back. That's another area where he can't drive the ball out to Trey Walker. It was interesting talking to Starkle and you, you could feel some of the leadership qualities. He's part of the people of change mm -hmm. committee. And he said, look, I, I have a more conservative background and all my teammates let me share what I think and I hear them out and it's been really productive for us as a team. Flag down, another first down run, at least initially for Kyrie Robinson. I've often said when you get in the locker room, there's a lot of different things that people have and up to the official. I think this is going to be a holding penalty on the offense. Holding number 57 in the offense. 10-yard penalty. We play second down. Trevor Robbins, the center, but I, I will say this, you'll see the big center in the center coming off and hold right there he's out of position can't quite get to his place but the locker room for me was always one of those places where you could have differences of opinions different views come from different parts of the country socioeconomically but you had to play together when you stepped out on the field it's 
Starko trying to set up a screen and he does get it off the holiness and he gets chased down the pursuit initially from Cameron Miller you know one thing Danny Gonzalez told us about his defense I don't know how we're going to play but if we all run as hard as we can to the football that's going to be a good start that's why I'm laughing because you see that in eight football players know okay I got it if I'm hungry I got to eat and the way you eat is you get a tackle if you're on defense right they're all flying to the football now third down and 14. You don't want to be the guy on film tomorrow and they say, hey, why won't you run into that's because that's effort. That's all that is. New Mexico, they teach their defensive players not to break down, but to run hard through the ball. Starkle, third and long. And that's knocked down. The pass broken up by Devin Sanders. And that will force a Spartan punt. Up by 19, yeah, nice play by Devin Sanders. Starkle looking over, and Trey Walker is the guy he wants to go to. He had high low on him, and just a really nice play of turning around, spinning. 19, getting that hand out, knocking the ball down. It's almost like they had a bracket on him with Devin Sanders underneath and Jarek Reed over the top, really paying attention to number 10. So back to back stops from these two defenses. As Fisher now angles this one down towards the corner. And a fantastic punt down at the one yard line. Right on their own goal line. That's where New Mexico will start under this Halloween full moon. A punt down to the one yard line by Elijah Fisher and so New Mexico starts in as bad a position as you can maybe the one and a half gives them a little breathing room to will throw good protection now he comes out of the pocket directing traffic clearing out some space for him to run and he's able to pick up about eight yards. Well, Derek Odom told us one of the struggles. This guy is athletic. We got to be careful with him. And he doesn't panic. Whenever he has that situation, he can direct traffic. He can move people around. And you've got to get him on the first time. You can't miss him. And that was Tyson Parker who just kind of flew by him, wasn't able to get him initially, and that gave, gives him some breathing room. And your playbook opens a little bit more when you get those yards and get you out of that harm's way. Second down and three. You got Marcus Williams, the tight end, lead blocking for Bobby Cole, who cuts it back and gets out to about the 15 yard line to move the chains. This is a new piece of what Marcus Williams can do now. You put 88 in a, in a full back position, back on back or Bob block. He goes there on Kyle Harmon and is able to give him some nice yards. And Cole, another carry. And another big hit. Lando Gray lost the helmet, so he'll have to come out of the game for San Jose State. You know, both of these tight end groups can play multiple, meaning they can be on a lot of scrimmage, they can be in the backfield, they can be in a, a flex position. They, they're really athletic, but you got to be able to block at certain times and really come off and establish yourself if you're in, in both of these offenses. Jordan Kress goes in motion into the backfield. Tuioti will give to Davon Vigilant. We know who was there, 45. <laughs> just, just call it. Kyle <laughs> Harmon. <laughs> Kyle Harmon. Initially committed to Cal. 45 right there. You see him sizing it up. And then when he goes, what I like about him, he doesn't hesitate. He gets right to the football, and he usually is securing the tackle. We asked him, what, is he, what do you expect from this New Mexico offense? He said, I don't know, but I know Rocky Long's their defensive coordinator, <laughs> and I know wherever he goes, they're tough. Exactly so I expect right. New Mexico to be tough. Well, that's certainly becoming a fingerprint in a half and a quarter of football of the Danny Gonzalez football team. Tuioti under pressure, escapes it on the move, and he throws it too high. He was trying to get it to Andrew Erickson. And so New Mexico will have to punt. That was a good job of pressure by EJ and 91. Big 91 just fights through it and he puts the quarterback right away. 
Tuyoti was like, okay, I got to get out of here. Big 91 is coming after me. <laughs> I can hear him. They added Noah Wright and Jake Akiva from nearby junior colleges. They got Lando Gray back from injury last year, also a JC guy. And they said we had to get bigger up front. Tyson Dyer with the punt to Bailey Gaither. About the 37 yard line. No, the 30 is where he took out it. Pardon me. Four seconds left in the third quarter. And, and you bring up a really good point. It made them. They had to be more physical on the inside, which they felt like they didn't have. And now I look at New Mexico, they said the same thing. Hey, we've got guys that will battle you. They love to play, but they don't know our defense yet. And as we put it in, we can play faster. They want to play even faster than what they're playing right now, coming downhill and being aggressive on defense and not passing. Speaking of battling, Nick Starkle. He's been playing through pain here in the second half. Back out there at quarterback. He's going to take a shot. He lost it. He's got Gaither. Bailey Gaither. Big shot. Touchdown. Still got it. Man, I tell you this. They're going to go and attack you once or twice in a court. Corey Hightower was in a place he didn't want to be. And Nick Starkle with a beautiful throw. And there was no chance Bailey Gaither wasn't going to catch this and wasn't going to score. And oh, Nick, boy. <laughs> Nick Starkle is saying, yeah, I might, my back or whatever on my lower body may not be feeling well, but my arm is still alive. Wow. So he's thrown a 26-yard touchdown, a 37-yard touchdown, a 43-yard touchdown, and now a 69-yard touchdown. Yeah, Danny Gonzalez said, what keeps me up at night is this. Big play. This year, Halloween fell on the weekend. <laughs> a penalty after the play during the celebration on New Mexico. So that will apply on the kick as material comes on to the point after. You have to be prepared for it, but you just don't know when it's going to come. And that was a great time to call that play. Flag down. Kick is good. Offsides on the defense. Been our booth official tonight, Charles. Well, <laughs> I can see that one right away. They're trying to get to it, and they've been close at coming close to the PATs, but they were a little bit early. Nick Starkle paying through some pain, but he's thrown for over 400 yards. Three quarters down, fourth quarter ahead here in San Jose. Look at our game summary through three quarters of football. Three touchdowns for Tavaka Tuioti, one of them rushing. Nick Starkle, his fifth career 400-yard passing game, his first as a Spartan. And this was the last one. A 69-yard connection with Bailey Gaither, his fourth touchdown today. Look at that offensive line holding up. And then Corey Hightower, one of the Wolf backers in a bad spot. Wolf safety, excuse me, just not able to stay up with Bailey Gaither. Kicking off from midfield because of the post touchdown penalty, but a flag is down. Essentially offsides on the kicking team where the, where the flag is going anyway. And that's changed where you can't take a full sprint now. You have to wait for the kicker to get into a certain position before you take off. Which has made it a little difficult for those, you know, those guys on the kickoff team want to run down. There's no foul for offsides on the kicking team. All right, thank you. Much. <laughs> I'm glad we had a chance to talk about the rule. <laughs> so you got the touchback, 25-yard line. Nick Starkle and Bailey Gaither connecting on a touchdown for the first time this year. Now in the stoppage. Brent Brennan, San Jose State just took a timeout. 
Yeah. They, something, they were on the sideline talking, and something didn't seem right. They were just, and he and Derek Odom immediately got out there. The defensive coordinator said, hey, let's get this thing back together and make sure we have everything aligned and that we have the right people on the field. Fox Bet Super 6 has given you another chance at winning $1 million of Terry's money. Last Sunday, three players came oh so close. So the million dollar prize is up for grabs again this Sunday. Download the app, play for free, and make your picks for this Sunday's game. Really important drive if you're New Mexico because the way this offense has been able to be explosive. New Mexico's had to work so much harder, but now they have to find a way to get into the end zone and try to get back that and a field goal to tie this game up. Tuioti on the move here on first down and throws a wobbler, but wrapping his body underneath it to make the catch was Andrew Erickson. Yeah, the ball sometimes doesn't come out clean, but his guys are able to track it and make great catches on it. That was a nice job again by Andrew Erickson. 22 yard pickup for Erickson, who got a touchdown the first of his career in the first half of this game. Now here's Davon Vigilant running through the first tackle. They're getting a good chunk. I thought we'd see a little bit more Davon Vigilant. Now he's getting a little call and see what he's able to do with in the offense. New Mexico wasting no time. Toyote down the sideline and he threw it off of the fingertips of Jordan Press. He had him. Yeah, they had a nice play design. They cleared out with Andrew Erickson. Tailback goes outside, vigilant, and then just in that little area, he was trying to find them. You see everything open up right there. He's, if you just stick it in there, it's a little too long for Chris. So now third down and five. Two tight ends in the game for the Lobos. Throws it back to Logan Green. And they just can't open up enough of a scene for him to get to the 43, which is where he needed to go. Think Good. about going for it here? I think they are. It looks like they're staying on the field. Fourth down and a looks like a long three. Got 13 personnel. Three tight ends in. Erickson, the lone receiver at the top. Now Williams shifts out there. Tuioti looking that way. Big pressure. Lofts it. Erickson. It's intercepted. Couldn't connect with him. And uh, San Jose State loses yardage on the pick. But Dari Darden came off the edge and did not allow Tuioti to get set his feet. Basically, it becomes a punt for you, but that's one of those turnovers that you've been trying to get if you're San Jose State. 41 flies in there. Look at him coming and doesn't allow Tuioti to settle. A nice pick. By the spark. It's about a 21 yard interception, though. If he does not catch that ball, they're going to have the ball about the 45. Easy to say. I mean, it's like trying to stop on the one yard line when they're letting you score, right? Exactly. Exactly. That's his first career interception for Darden. Meanwhile, Starkle. Who had a career year against New Mexico when he was the quarterback at AM has been fantastic today. And there's Kyrie Robinson with the carry. This was back in 2017 at Kyle Field. This is that, excuse me, this is that game plus this game. So this is career against New Mexico. Well that now that <laughs> you can win some awards on that. Second down and nine. He wants Gaither, and he finds a spot, comes back to the football, and now he's racing down the sideline. Bailey Gaither to the 20, and he'll go out at about the 19. This is a big time throw by Nick Starker, but Bailey Gaither, you talk about being friendly to your quarterback. You've got to come back and make sure 
when you find a hole, you come back to him. I talk about being friendly all the time. He just gets up there, settles, and then just comes back, drives back to the football. And that was a really nice block down the field as well by his big tight end, Sam Olson. 55 yard connection. Starkle now 458 yards passing. This is Kyrie Robinson who stopped. How about, uh, you know how many times San Jose State's been in the red zone and they're not, they just got on there. This is the second time they've been in the red zone. The second time? Wow. They've had some explosive plays tonight. And just said, hey, we're, gonna, we're not going to worry about the red zone, even though we've been pretty effective there. Coming in, they were three for three in the red zone, and then two for three for touchdowns coming into the nice ball game. They've just been hitting home runs. <laughs> yeah. Trick play. This is Isaiah Hamilton turning the corner and getting dragged down after a pickup of about eight yards. Great hustle by Jared Reed. Because I thought that play was going to get more yardage, but number nine sniffed it out and really just stayed with the other number nine. This offensive line, you can't say enough about what they've been able to do to protect Nick Sparkle in the second half. Playing with a, a little bit of pain in his side. We've seen him struggle at times to walk, but he's maybe a, in a shot of adrenaline from the way this offense is played. Tyler Nevins with a strong run. He led this team in rushing in 2017 and 18. Right there, I thought that was going to be a tackle for loss. He was able to still fight through that and get some yards. Trey Walker already with two touchdown catches. He's the receiver at the top of the screen. And now they're going to slow it down a little bit, take some clock. No need to rush right now with the lead that they have. And Evans is the back again. Pressure from New Mexico. Nevins stays on his feet and he gets down just shy of the goal line. And it'll be third and goal this from inside the one. Sorry about that guy. This offensive line, they climb to the second level real nice. Look at that, just moving people around. Derek Deese Jr. and the, the left side of the line of scrimmage is just moving guys out of the way. Nevins again. Nevins churning, reaching. No signal yet, and he's down shy of the goal line. He didn't get in. So now it's fourth and goal. That second effort sure looked like he got in. Let's see here. Good offensive push. But Brandon shot with a nice, came in and just really did a good job there. Mm. Offense staying on the field. And they were, did well not to rush there. Maybe because we just got the announcement from Mike Catone. We're going to have a review. Tyler Nevins thinks he's going to have a touchdown after they look at this. The ruling on the field is that he was down shy of the goal line. What a great look. Let's see. 46 shook just in there and holding him. But he's still driving those feet and legs. The knee. Man. Ooh, so, that's so close. It looks like his knee is going down, but he's able to get the ball across the line. Yeah, let's look at that view again. I think he's down. I think it's a good call by the official. What do you it's think? Like the left knee hits before he's able to cross the plane and he's got the great vantage point right there I think this call stands it'll be fourth and goal are we scoring at home is what is Charles six for six on replay reviews I'm just saying that uh, initially that left knee hits or right knee and he's not able to get it up there in time has anyone ever gone seven for seven <laughs> can you check the record don't uh, don't it's like a free throw shooter don't jinx me now <laughs> I'm told it's our ninth review. 
San Paulo said. We've only gone this seven. All right. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Okay. Because they get the right call? Yeah, because there were a couple of pushes. And I think the official, he made a great call on it because he saw everything on that one. That was, you couldn't ask for any better vantage point. Now, a field goal would make it a two touchdown game. So they don't want to do that. No, I think they want to. This is an opportunity at home to put this thing away with a team that's been feisty and battling you all night. Kyrie Robinson is the back. Starkle, play action, throws, caught Sam Olsen. The first catch of his career is a touchdown. The true freshman with a huge score. Look at all his teammates celebrating. That's when you know the locker room is somewhat together and you get the belt. Freshmen come in. Many opportunities and options on that play for Nick Starkle. He's going to have every option to throw. There's these junior Sam Olsen. You got Trey Walker coming across. And those guys are celebrating as much as Sam Olsen is. That's That, to me, is where you know your team has come together. It's a great look at it. Trey yeah. Walker already with two touchdowns. Derek Geese Jr. had two last week. They're both guys that know, hey, you can give me the ball in the paint. And they're both celebrating with Sam Olsen. What a memory for his first touchdown. 17 points, Spartan lead. We've had several punches in this game. The question is, did San Jose State, a touchdown to go up 17, land the biggest? New Mexico with 9.34 remaining. Back on the field on offense. Millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Text PLAY to the number on your screen to help kids keep in the game. Big possession here for New Mexico. They tied the game. Not all that long ago, it feels like. And then San Jose State bounced back offensively to Eoti with a first down run. Kyle Harmon again with a huge hit. To Eoti. To Eoti, when he decides to run, he's able to pick up yards. Usually he's able to get down, but Kyle Harmon lays the boom on him. Over five yards of carry in this game for To Eoti. Now he wants to throw. Pointing, pulling it down. Another first down. Still up the sideline and finally gets knocked out. Well, the problem is they're only rushing three and they've dropped eight, but there's nobody really paying close attention to the quarterback. New Mexico in a rush after that 26 yard pickup. Triote. This time he will throw and too wide for Jordan Press. And this game is far from over. San Jose State defense, you better stay after and make sure you protect any running lane. Tuioti seems to always find them and know where to go when he takes off and runs with the football. this time pressure gets there and lands they won't go with the set Hoko has been getting closer and closer and closer and that time he got there 12 career starts before the night just a guy that's got a great motor second sack of the night for the Spartan defense and now all of a sudden after two big runs from Toyota, it's third and 20. Pressure again. And again he goes down. Ali'i Matau with the sack. What did they say about getting better? We have to get better up front. 
this is how you get better. You get home and you get guys rallying to the football. And that was an outstanding opportunity and a job by that defensive front. A 10. My team. Another one. A 10-yard run and then a 26-yard run from Tavaka Tuioti to start that drive. And then a couple of sacks for San Jose State after the incompletion. And once again, the booming leg of Tyson Dyer. And that sends Bailey Gaither back to the 7 or 8-yard line. 17-point lead for number 17 back onto the field. Coming up next on FS1, the final game of a huge college football Saturday kicks off. Nevada and UNLV, a Mountain West, an in-state rivalry. Keep it here on FS1, also streaming live on the Fox Sports app. Now, of course, Nevada's quarterback, Carson Strong, was the Mountain West Offensive Player of the Week. He got the Opoi belt last week. 420 yards throwing, 39 completions. He's going to have a... He's going to have a huge night tonight to take the Offensive Player of the Week award away from Nick Starkle this week. Nick Starkle has been on fire uh, earlier in the game. It looked like he was struggling right after halftime. But he's still been able to come out again. you got to give those guys up front. Jack Snyder, Justin Chamberlain, Trevor Robbins, Tyler Stevens, and Jamie Navarro. And the tight end group, a lot of credit for keeping them clean. 459 yards passing the five touchdowns for Starkle a career high. Here's an opportunity though for you to show that you're game, you can run the football here. Blake blocks low. Tyree Robinson makes it a third down at about three. And Miller said, okay, uh, I'm tired of you running now. Let me let me hold you up for a little bit. <laughs> he just tapped him on the head and said, okay, let's do it again. <laughs> so a third down and one here. Remember, this team, San Jose State, Brent Brennan said, we thought if we were a better running team last year, we would have won eight games instead of five. And then last week against Air Force, we want to run the rock only two and a half yards of carry. And this is where you show it. This is these are the kind of games where you can put them away with your run game. Lake block at two. And Brent Brennan took a timeout, I believe he did. San Jose State took the timeout. This is the only time you can prove it to me. If you can do it in a San game where you're trying to put it away. Second timeout of the half. That's where you do it. Media timeout. Spartans have one timeout left. Well, it's not altogether that bad because I don't know if they were going to get it off in time. <laughs> it was really going to be close. Brent Brennan thinking better safe than sorry. And part of that was maybe he didn't like. You could see Nick Starkle talking about whatever adjustment yeah. he had made. But they'll have another shot at it. They'll be on the field here. Big third and one coming up with 544 to go. Third down and one for San Jose State out of the timeout. Ball sits on Spartans' own 17-yard line. Tyree Robinson. No, it's Tyler Nevins who gets the handoff. And the big back gets the first down. What you want to do is go on the four-minute offense, and this is, these are the kind of plays where you want to see, okay, we haven't run the football as effectively as we want to, but how do we finish the game if we're San Jose State? If you're New Mexico, you want to do everything you can to get that ball back. You still have all three of your timeouts, but the score is really not in your favor at this point. New Mexico tied the game at 21, just under 11 minutes left in the third quarter. Yeah, but it's been all Spartans since then. Here's Tyler Nevins again. 
As the clock ticks under five minutes remaining here in this first quarter. Remember, San Jose State will play short week at San Diego State Friday. Brady Holt back in charge, of course, of the Aztecs. Took over after uh, Rocky Long retired for those 19 days before yeah. he came back as New Mexico's defensive coordinator. So they're going to see the 3-3-5 defense yeah. again. Meanwhile, for New Mexico, they're going to go home. Then they'll drive on Monday after they get tested to Vegas. And they'll spend the week preparing in Las Vegas before they go off to Hawaii. Tyler Nevins fighting. You're in a situation where you have to do everything you can to get your guys prepared and, and, and up to speed. And, and you, they knew this was going to be a tough test for them. And talking to, you know, the coaching staff and the players, the San Jose State team beat them last year. They wanted to come out and compete. They wanted to win this game. They just didn't have things fall in their favor. And they had two, gave up too many big plays like they were concerned about what they talked about from the very beginning of the week. Andy Gonzalez making his debut. The Albuquerque native, his first day as a head coach. And a false start up front. Jake Trevor Robbins, the center. False start. Number 57 in the offense. The Why center can't do it. it, 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 it and I'm laughing because I can see him moving. And once he got started, the ball was still on the ground. And as a lefty, everything was going to his right, and his hand was still on the ball to his left. Very rare that you see a lot of left-handed centers also, which is one of the things that is interesting. So he's a he has a special place in your heart. No, he Lefties stick he together. <laughs> we do. Third down and 11 as Isaiah Holiness comes onto the field for San Jose State. Stark goes 37 pass of the game goes to Holiness up to the 30. But that'll be well shy of the first down. It'll bring up fourth down and four. They do so much with the screen game. Initially and late, it always looks like it's going to pick up more yards, but really nice job again by that New Mexico defense of not allowing them to get that first down. For those of you tuning in to see the battle for Nevada, UNLV and Nevada, that game is underway from Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas on FS2. And we will get you right to the beautiful new Raiders Stadium as soon as our game concludes. Time now for the smoke and play of the game. Sponsored by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. What's your beef? No question about this one. Nick Starkle. No question about it. Had the hot hand the last time he played New Mexico and so picked up right where he left off. Just finding receivers open. Real good. His back or something was bothering him, but not his arm. His arm was why alive and he was able to get the ball to a lot of different weapons today. He has 176 yards of touchdowns <laughs> thrown. A 37 yarder, a 43 yarder, a 26 yarder, a 69 yarder, and a one yard. 35 yards per scoring pass. As Fisher comes on to punt. And Logan Green with the fair catch. It's just an incredible story. And we mentioned we talked to Nick Starkle is college career in some ways mirroring his life right son of an army dad and a navy mom he's moved all over the country he actually lived here in northern california for a few years they moved to new orleans a month he told us before hurricane katrina hit so they had to move in with family and he says he does think it's why despite the fact that he started a and m then went to arkansas now here it's part of why he's such a good leader because yeah. he and his older sister lexi often joke that they never had the opportunity to be the quiet kids in class or they in the neighborhood. Could, they couldn't be introverts. Because they wouldn't have made friends. <laughs> exactly. They had to show everybody who they were right away. Toyote was sacked twice on the previous New Mexico possession, and he's under duress that time. This, this defense knows all he has to do is throw the ball every single time. They're going to be coming after him, no matter who they put in. Get to the quarterback. So look, we know New Mexico, they're up against it, right? They may not 
be at home. We know they're not going to practice at home next week. The local rules don't allow they'll be in Vegas. Then they go to Hawaii, where their following game is. It's supposed to be at home. We don't know yet. Tuioti on the move. But you have to believe the fact that their game last week was canceled. This was supposed to be a home game was moved. All these things are certainly challenges. What do you like from what you've seen this first edition of Danny Gonzalez? I, I like that they compete. Uh, I like that they come out and fight you. Uh, I think there's some things on offense that they're, they're going to have to keep improving on. But from a defensive standpoint, they were without guys. They had six new defensive starters. You know? And to come in and battle the way they did, uh, it, 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 you got to take that and, and use that as a, a good foundation. Jordan Press catches that one for a first down. A third down conversion. A nice throw from Tuyo. The other two minutes now remaining in regulation. Danny Gonzalez and Rocky Long and that staff, they're not going to sugarcoat it either. They're going to tell guys, look, this is what we need to do. But I think they understand it's a process and it wasn't going to happen overnight. But it gives you a starting point. Tuyoti. Dumps it off this time to Bryson Carroll. Another first down across midfield. Danny Gonzalez has made no secret about what his goal is. He says repeatedly, we are going to win a fifth conference championship before I die. He, 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 he spoke it, and he said, these guys got to believe it, and, and we're going to get it done. And I think a lot of it goes back to their past, their present, and their future. And I think that's the one thing that we're seeing now. How are you going to fight even when we're down? And we have no chance to win. These are the kind of things that you look at as a coach and a player to say, we're not going to ever quit. Another first down for Tuioti. Plenty of space for Bryce and Carroll. And he'll pick up another first down. Down to the 22 yard line. My only concern that Kyle Harmon just went down. This is where I would get guys like that out of the game. Just because they play so hard, they're not going to slow down. And you can see he's injured on this play. And he's the heart and soul to me of this defense. They check on. Now Harvard's going to sit up. And he was the centerpiece of such a physical game last week and he has been everywhere leading the team a career high 13 tackles including a tackle for loss for Kyle Harmon in this game I love how he plays the linebacker position 45 he shows up played running back in high school and linebacker so he knows the angles and how to attack and every single time that ball seems to come his way he secures the tackle. Flow, fill, and then finish is what I like to see out of a linebacker. You got to get healthy because you know it's going to be a physical game. A short week in San Diego. Tuioti into traffic that time. A big hit delivered. Cedric Patterson took the crunch. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Nehemiah Shelton isn't a big guy, but he will come up and hit you. That's not the first time on film I've seen him. Even against Air Force, he was coming downhill at the cornerback position. Watch 23. He's not afraid to just, and it's a clean hit. And, and Patterson is like, oh my goodness, I've been there before, brother. Woo. Still feel it? Yes. Something inside you? <laughs> Under a minute now. Remaining in this game is Tuioti overshoots Erickson in the end zone. Yeah, Tuioti is running for his life now, just trying to find a way to get that ball to somebody to score. And I think if you're the defense, you're doing everything you can to keep them out of the end zone. Only six points last week against Air Force, and you're hoping if you're the defensive group to keep him the 21 tonight. Third down and 10. Tuioti jump ball, and that one was well defended by Nehemiah Shelton. And the reason they let him get away with it is because at the last second, he went and attacked the ball. Both of those guys grabbing each other all the way down the field. 
press almost goes over the top of him and <laughs> comes up with the ball. Yeah, Shelton does not have the advantage in height there. Press is six foot. But a good leaper. So now fourth down and ten. The Tuioti in this game almost 300 yards passing. And that's where it'll end. What an effort by that young man that I was so much up against the Lobos. A canceled game and a moved game. And this is the last play Tuioti will play in this one. Got two quarterbacks that have shown some toughness tonight. Tuioti took a shot there. And of course, he's not happy. But I'll say this again. I, I think we're going to see a lot out of this New Mexico Lobo team and what they're going to do every and they can use this as a building block for San Jose State you look at this and say hey look we're two and oh they matched last year's conference win total tonight Charles exactly and I think that's the key for them thinking the best playing football guy is what victory near because you know the game is over back, at the end of the game back to back wins <laughs> haven't done that since 2014 wow but an impressive win last week over Air Force Brent Brennan's Team got challenged, no doubt, by Dana Gonzalez's Lobos. They tied the game at 21. They San Jose State with Nick Starkle a little bit hampered, but he's got a home, there's no doubt. Career high five touchdowns for the two time graduate transfer for the first time in over 30 years. San Jose State has started the season 2 0. Partner, we're going to have some fun this year. I'm looking forward to it. Great win for San Jose State. I'm sure we'll see more from New Mexico. On this Halloween night, thanks for hanging with us for our whole crew. Brian Woodrow, Mark Vittorio, Charles Arbuckle. This is Guy Haberman saying stay tuned. Let's get you out to Nevada at UNLV right now.